Sports, that is, actor Anthony Anderson hosted Saturday's ceremony celebrating achievements by people of color in entertainment. The show even saw a special appearance by Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, who took the stage to accept the President's Award in recognition of their public service work. But it was music royalty who brought down the house. Mary J. Blige delivering a show-stopping performance of one of her latest hits, Good Morning Gorgeous. Here's a bit of that. I love that Mary J's having a moment right now. So this is your full halftime Her show. moment is not going to end, okay? So people are just now getting into Mary J. Blige, which is great. Better late than never. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But here's the thing. Good people, morning, gorgeous. You know this. Mary J's been, yeah. she's been in the game 30 yeah. years. Oh, gee. Yeah. 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 Are her are sales of her older albums going? Yes, oh, skyrocketing. Through the roof. Like, through the roof. Through the roof. Yeah, yeah really roof. cool. It's awesome. Other big winners of the night included Jennifer Hudson for Speck Will Smith for King Richard and one of our favorites around here, Encanto, winning Outstanding Animated Motion Picture. All right, next up, Mick Jagger and Questlove, the unlikely musical duo, are teaming up for a new project headed to the small screen. Mick and Quest are going to produce a four-part docu-series about the life and legacy of music icon oh. James Brown. They're going to speak with friends and family members and collaborators from the legend's long career. The show's titled James Brown, Say It Loud. It's expected to hit A&E Network next year, about the same time that the legendary artist would have celebrated his 90th birthday. Oh. And now to Mira Sorvino and Lisa Kudrow, the Rami and Michelle duo reuniting during last night's SAG Awards to present Outstanding Ensemble in the Comedy <laughs> Series category. The comedic pair rocking two colorful ensembles of their own, reminding fans of this iconic movie moment. Yeah. Flashbacks right 25 there. 25 years wow. ago since Lisa and Mira hit the dance floor in Romy and Michelle's high Romy school. Romy and Michelle. Romy. Sorry, Have I, you I, not I, ever I seen it? I know. That? We didn't want to I, correct I, you the I, first I, time. I yeah. Romy. But actually, I, I, it's I, not even that. It's Romy. Romy. Romy and Michelle. Okay. What are you doing with that movie? Romy and Michelle. I don't know. You were busy. 25 years ago. You were busy. He was busy. I was in Cancun. That explains a lot. Let's go. Muy bueno, Romy. Uh, finally, Sarah Jessica Parker and Matthew Broderick, the real-life Hollywood couple, took Broadway by storm this weekend. SJP and Broderick portraying three different married couples in the debut of Plaza Suite at the Hudson Theater. The award-winning duo sharing a big thanks to the audience who waited nearly two years to catch the show after COVID delayed the production. Thank you so much for your warmth, for your hospitality. You've stood by and been patient and enthusiastic and optimistic. And we simply wanted to thank you because by doing that, you have supported our entire theater community. And that means all the people you don't see back here and all the people you've met in the front. Plaza Suite marking another good sign that Broadway is back. That's awesome. And that is going to do it. Muchas gracias. <laughs> And now the reason we call the show Popstar Plus. Just a few more headlines for you. We'll start with Gaming Wall Street. HBO Max's upcoming docu-series promises to take a deep dive into last year's unexpected GameStop stock boom, narrated by Succession's Kieran Culkin. Here's a peek at the first trailer. GameStop. 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 Remember when you couldn't stop hearing about GameStop? Well, thanks to a bunch of nerds on Reddit, its stock price raised to heights no one could have ever imagined. Because of all these hedge funds shorting the stock, GameStop started off as a undervalued play. So a lot of people are buying into it, not even worried that they lose all their money. It's more about a middle finger to the hedge funds. There's this opportunity here to bet against what all the hedge funds did. Finally, the underdogs had the upper hand. Finally, somebody can explain that whole thing. Two-part documentary, Gaming Wall Street, which looks great, starts streaming on Thursday. Finally, Benedict Cumberbatch, the Doctor Strange star, is used to people tripping over his name because it is a mouthful. And in a recent interview, when he was on the Graham Norton show, the British actor revealed Madonna's surprising reaction to seeing his name on an audition call sheet. Didn't you audition for Madonna, Benedict? Oh, God, yes, I did. Um, and, uh, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, she just sort of came in uh, breezily, very late, and uh, had a clipboard in hand and said, yeah, Benedict Cumberbatch, is that really your name? And I went, yes, it is Madonna. <laughs> well, maybe one day he can take on the single name moniker, too, and just be known as Benedict.
Well, those are your Pop Star Plus headlines for today. Coming up next, Tony Shalhoub and the marvelous Mrs. Maisel cast on what's to come this season. Stay with us. Yeah, welcome back to Pop Star Plus. Did you catch the latest episode of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel yet? I'm sure it landed in your inbox over the weekend, or maybe you're uh, not watching it. Well, you should be. Tony Shalhoub is great in the show. He plays Abe Weissman, the father of comedian Midge Maisel. And Tony, along with the rest of the cast who play parents on the show, spoke to us about what they love most about their characters. Do you think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. And welcome back to Pop Star Plus. Did you catch the latest episode of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel yet? I'm sure it landed in your inbox over the weekend, or maybe you're uh, not watching it. Well, you should be. Tony Shalhoub is great in the show. He plays Abe Weissman, the father of comedian Midge Maisel. And Tony, along with the rest of the cast who play parents on the show, spoke to us about what they love most about their characters. It's been a, a big, big transitional period for Abe. He's let go of his conventional life and stable career. This season really develops his whole period of kind of reinventing himself. On the positive side, in a way, it brings him closer, I think, to Midge because her life is, uh, you know, she's gotten bounced off the, the tour and she's forced to start over too. So in a way, there's, a, there's an intersection of, of, their, of their paths. Rose's journeys have been so thrilling and so um, surprising to me as an actor. So as we know, she started this show with this judgment about what was happening with her child and definitely felt like she understood or thought she understood exactly how the, the world was supposed to work. And I love how all of that, you know, it was combusted and completely turned upside down by what happened with this divorce. So I think what's great about season four is we're going to see everything that she trusted at one point is gone and she's got a new or a job. And so we see a businesswoman really coming into, in, into her own, which, by the way, is not unlike her child. Mm -hmm. so Apple, like Apple never really seemed to fall that far from tree. But now, like the tree is like being taken care of by the apple. So that's kind of beautiful. What can we expect from Shirley in season four is more Shirley. Shirley, Shirley is always Shirley. Um, her driving passion is her family. She is concerned that her son is single. Um, she wants everybody to be settled and happy and well fed and she is going to go to the ends of the earth to make sure that that's true. I think uh, that Moish will forever be rooting for Midge and Joel to get back together while magically maintaining relationships with each, but perhaps that's part of his uh, not so evil plan to get them back together by being involved in both of their lives. I think that's Moish's plan for season four. Probably not your cup of tea though, right, eh? Bye bye, Bertie. I know nothing about the show, Moish. Yes, but I know you. 
And I know you wouldn't like Bye Bye Birdie because Bye Bye Birdie is entertaining. I know nothing about the show. They have a very complicated relationship, these two. They're, they're, uh, they are very different. On the other hand, they're kind of more similar in some ways than they would even want to ever want to admit. They're tied together. They're family. They're, even though their children are separated and, and divorced, they share grandchildren. And they're forever, they're forever, you know, bonded um, for good or for ill. Um, yeah, and Jimmy I and think, Dan found a great balance also of the oil and water nature of the Weissmans and, and the Maisels as the, the patriarchs and matriarchs. Well, I have to say, I'm, I'm like madly in love with Caroline. So when we work together, it's hard to be at odds. It's always been weird for me to be an actor that has to have tension with somebody that I love so, so much, but it's also so much fun because there's so much trust. So that when we had that scene running out, you know, where I ran out of her house and just screamed and yelled in the neighborhood, that was one of my most fun moments of working on the show. So fun. Shut up! You shut up! You shut up! Both of you shut up! Shirley! Oh, God. Rose, you scared me. What is the matter with you? We have neighbors. And right now they're all looking at you like you're insane. And therefore they're looking at me like I'm insane because I live here with you in this house. I think one of the most enjoyable and challenging aspects of working on The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel is the style uh, of the eight page wonder, as uh, it's called. That is to say that there's an eight page scene it's normally cut up into anywhere from 20 to 40 pieces of coverage. Hey! Oh my, oh my gosh. God. What is it? It's your car is blocking mine. My car. Get up, you gotta move it. What time is it? It's four after five. Four after five in the morning. And I'm late. Come on, get a move on. Oh, my leg is asleep. You both wear pajamas? What are your girlfriends? Well, my slippers. Cheryl and me, we sleep in the buff. It's healthier, freer, warmer, too. Where did I put my robe? Skin on skin as God intended. Come on! Chop, chop! Oh, yeah. You know, as an actor, to be challenged by that is not something I'd experienced before. But this style of acting is not something I uh, was was uh, prepared for and have absolutely loved to learn how to do. Rose, <laughs> it's laundry day. A bob, laundry day. It's five in the morning. Her purity, her authenticity, her Ooh. lack of shame. It's something that is so freeing. Marn and I talk about this a lot, that these characters give us a chance to exercise freedoms that we don't necessarily personally possess. Um, Marn has talked to me a lot about Rose's confidence that she is trying to access inside of herself. And I feel the same way about Shirley. Shirley has no shame. She is all embracing. She's all heart and she's completely authentic. There is no filter between what she thinks and what she says, which I love. Moish, could you come down here, please? Sh Shirley, this is completely unnecessary. Moisha! Shirley! Someone's in trouble. Shut up, Alan! Moishi! Yeah! Can you come down here, please? Shirley, I assure you. Moish! I'm not wearing pants. I need to ask you something. You can't ask me from there? No. Do I need to put on pants? Yes! All right. I delight in, in playing this character. Uh, I'm a father myself uh, of two daughters that are uh, similar age to Midge. And there's a, a lot of overlap there. Uh, it's, I guess the best, the most fun for, for me is, is when we, we do these large group scenes, uh, the family, both families together, uh, try, you know, hammering out their their issues. We're a cast that's very tightly knit and we, we all delight in playing off of each other. It's forever challenging, but it's super rewarding. The same tradition of our, the show's creators, writers, directors, Amy and Dan Palladino, to expand the universe, to drive Midge's character forward in her ambitious attempts to gain control of her own career and life on her terms. Um, all the relationships expanding, new characters introduced, that tradition, season after season, will continue. And if you like that sort of thing and you can lower your expectations, you're up for a great ride. <laughs> you can watch two new episodes of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel every week on Prime Video. Coming up next, a visit with a very special musical couple. That is David Foster and Catherine McPhee. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now.
This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. NBC News. Streaming free. Now. We're back for more than five decades. David Foster has worked with so many greats. Dolly Parton, Earth, Wind & Fire, Josh Groban, just to name a couple. These days, he's gearing up for a Las Vegas residency, and he spoke to our third hour friends all about it. And his lovely wife, singer Catherine McPhee, also joined. This morning, we are catching up with a musical powerhouse, 16-time Grammy winner, David Foster. He's written and produced classics like Unforgettable by Nat King Cole and Natalie Cole, Andrea Bocelli's The Prayer, and of course, I Will Always Love You by Whitney Houston. The and now best. David is bringing that music to life once again during his latest run in Vegas, accompanied by a very special person. David joins us now to tell us all about it. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. David. Morning, guys. So we know you're headed back to Vegas to headline a few shows, changing things up a little bit. I hear this time around. What are you going to do differently? Uh, we're not sure, but we're going to we're going to we're going to come up with some different things because you know Vegas, you always got to change it up. And uh, we had a great time there in February, and now April 20, 21, and twenty three, I think. And uh, you never know what can happen. I love to go to the audience, get people to sing. And uh, we'll do some different things. You say you're going to do some different things, David, but one thing that is going to remain the same is your wife, Catherine McPhee, will be there. <laughs> is she around now? Where is she? What's she up to? I thought you were going to say that the songs will be the same. <laughs> <laughs> My wife in. is right here. You just hey. brought me in. Hey. Hey. hey, Catherine. Hi. How are you? So what are you looking forward to? Oh, I, we love touring around together, and Vegas in particular is always fun for the both of us. Uh, there's just a different excitement you get from being on stage in Vegas. Um, I did about 12 years, 15 years ago, I did David's PBS special, which is... Um, in Vegas. In, Ve in Vegas, so we have a long history of doing things And together. it's Vegas. It's the win. It's the Encore Theater. Yeah, it's like... What a place. And it's so great to be back in person. You guys seem, I follow you, you know, on social media. You seem to have so much fun together. What's the secret? Well, we did, we, we, we do, and we, we during, <laughs> we <did>. during the <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> we did, and then we had a baby, and it all went to. Uh, you know, we can all relate. Yeah. yeah. No, we, had, we did the Cat and Dave show during the pandemic on Instagram, and we'd start out like this. And then we'd get crazy from there. <laughs> keep going, keep going, yeah, a little I mean, more, come this, on. Is this a show you can you take on the road? Out. I think that, uh, this is cliche, but we started as friends a long, long time ago mm -hmm. when I was a contestant on American Idol 15, 16 years ago. So uh, having a strong friendship is a way to laugh through a lot of stuff, so. What do you guys, out. everybody, every single parent says to their kids, they don't make music, you know, like they used to anymore. What are you guys <laughs> listening to today? Um, I, shockingly, you're gonna, I mean, this might surprise you, I do not listen to any music except for show tunes or song, uh, musicals that I'm inspired by that I want to perhaps 
revive on Broadway um, or a show that I coveted that I wish I'd played on Broadway. I'm like a musical theater nerd. I'm and me, I love Drake. I love oh. Bieber. I love Ed Sheeran. <laughs> I, love, uh, Je- I love them all. I, I think everything is, uh, The weekend. he's killing it right now. Yeah. I love all of He's not the type to say, oh, you know, they don't make music. He loves what's happening in music mm-hmm. right now. I just don't even know what's happening in music anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have to ask, I know your your adorable son, Rennie, just turned one yeah. last week. Um, you know, we we very rarely play, you know, like nursery type music to our kids. Um, what kind of music do you, do you play for him and, and how's motherhood been going for you? Oh, it's so much fun. It's really amazing how the little classic nursery rhymes, they really do work. They work. The second, like, you know, they're in that phase where diaper changes are a nightmare for them and mom <laughs> and dad. And so the wheels on the bus go around. Oh, wait, we have another one. Uh, um, that one baby is- will be in the oh, who doesn't oh, love a little rapping? Love um, well, and of course, if you two are singing, it's soothing. Um, David, what is it like for you becoming a father again and having a one-year-old? I had the chance to speak to your older daughters the other day on their podcast. They are hysterical. Mm. Oh, yeah, oh, you guys so did funny. great together. Um, you know, I swear to you, and you're not going to believe this maybe, but I have loved every second of it. Oh. With all due respect to all my other kids who I've loved too, but I've loved every second. And Kat, for one year, has not ever even gotten slightly remotely rattled, not once. And our baby was up at 3 o'clock this morning for an hour and a half, and um, she just like, oh, well, you know, just all sweet. No, you know. you've been, I mean, you've been, you just have a different experience this time around, just because you've had a little bit more time. Yeah. To A little more time? <laughs> a lot more time. You were a little busier about, I don't know how many years ago, but. Yeah. <laughs> And again, you can catch David Foster's Las Vegas residency in April. Just ahead, we're celebrating John Bon Jovi with something special from our vault. Stay with us. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Welcome back. It's his life. Legendary rocker John Bon Jovi celebrating a milestone 60 60th birthday for John this week. And to mark the occasion, we pulled a JBJ moment from our vault, going all the way back to 1993. John Bon Jovi has enjoyed what you might call a storybook life. He managed to sign his first big record deal when he was only 20. Over the next decade, he scored with four hit albums, went on a successful world tour, married his childhood sweetheart, and even took part on the big screen. But then a couple of years ago came the burnout and the resulting split with his band. Well, now the band's back together, back on tour, and out with a new album. It's called Keep the Faith. John Bon Jovi, good morning. Thank you. Good In morning. retrospect, does, does the decision to break up the band a couple of years ago seem like a bad idea or the best thing you ever did? You know, it, it, it's funny because there, there was truly just a hiatus and not an official breakup, you know. But after four consecutive albums and four consecutive tours, it was funny that these guys that all grew up in a garage in New Jersey we're now playing 50, 60,000 seat stadiums and not having the fun that we had 10 years ago. So what we did was pulled back and said, listen, time to take a break. What'd you do during the two years you were away from it? Anything but this. Serious? Uh, yes. I uh, just learned where the lawnmower was again at my house. And you know, I, I went 
to go and rediscover America. I went to go and redefine what it is that I set out to do playing. I went to uh, just really live life for the first time because there's a great point about getting a record deal when you're 20. You get to see the record, the, the, the world firsthand at a very young age. Um, the bad part is that you're growing up in public and a lot of times you're gonna stumble and you're gonna fall and a lot of things are gonna happen. And then 10 years down the road when you're 30, you look back and you go, well, this was great, this wasn't so great, this was great, and you reassess the situation. Yeah, you didn't miss it at all, though? No elements of it? Uh, sure, sure, there's always the magic of, of doing things and, and it was like withdrawals. I couldn't just seriously walk off the stage and leave it. That's when I did the Young Guns project and uh, found myself in a whole nother world, you know, with people that were making movies and I, I, here I am nominated for an Academy Award. I'm going, I just wrote some, some music, you know, I'm minding my own business. It was truly a case of withdrawals so the point came, okay, now for the next year, no soundtracks, no records, no anything, stay home. And I did. Mm -hmm. and so now you come back, you get the band together, you get a new CD out, you're 30 years old, you're different. Is the music different? I think so. I think that it's, uh, it's the constant evolution. And what this record did was uh, change a lot of people's theories of what they thought this band was. You know, and a lot of people were almost expecting it. They, they looked at it as, this is Levi's, we know what to get out of a pair of Levi's, you know, this is McDonald's. Now, I hit them with something completely new and it took people back, it took them a while to, to get used to it, but um, I didn't think that I was gonna do anything safe. I wasn't gonna do the obvious. And why? I why, why screw around with the formula? Why not screw around with the formula that works? Could you imagine the, the, the boredom in, in just every day waking up and doing the same thing? I just had to push the envelope, you know? I mean, how many more number one records do you need before you're satisfied? I needed to do something that artistically made me happy, and then if it was commercially successful, great. You know, but what was more important to me at this point was having something to say. Doesn't the record company ever ever say something like that? Record companies like hits. I watched my record company pace up and down a lot. <laughs> you know, I caused a few gray hairs there. Fortunately, at the end of the day, Brian, is what would happen is uh, the record's doing very well, and and they they've let out a great sigh of relief and everything is going well. But there was there was some concern on their part, sure, because they said, well, where is where is why don't you? And I says, I don't think I want to right now. And uh, unfortunately, at the end of the day, it's all working out. Sure. So you're back on track. You're back on tour. Yeah. Um, album's doing well. What do you do this time around to, to avoid a second case of burnout? Well, to make it much different than in, the first in, time. In this new chapter, I think the, our theory is: is no matter what you throw at us, we've seen it before. You know, there's not there's not an arena or a stadium or a, or a record situation that we haven't been in. And unlike any previous album, where we're literally on the road the day the record came out, sometimes even before a record was released, this time, you know, it came out in November, we said, let's stick it out for the holidays, let's stay home, do the videos from Jersey, let's go out in February. So we waited three months, which is something we've never done on all five previous records. But with this one, we, we paced it a little more. There's, there's something new to us called a day off once in a while. Mm. Final note, I understand that, that you were quoted again as saying that on this, uh, on this album there was a Jersey attitude that pervades each and every song. Uh, give me a working definition, uh, Jersey I, attitude. I think that the, uh, the working thing is, is probably the biggest word in that sentence, and that we, um, we've always considered ourselves a garage band, and now we just play big garages. And a big, special, happy early birthday to our, our buddy, New Jersey's finest, John Bon Jovi. Well, that wraps up another Pop Star Plus tomorrow, a show people cannot stop talking about. We'll give you some insight into inventing Anna. We'll see you then. From Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza. It is fun here, y'all. We have a great crowd. Temps are low, are high. They are decked out in red, white, and blue. Are you feeling it? The Olympic spirit. The Winter Olympics have officially kicked into high gear. That's a beauty. It's like a dream come true. <laughs> Super Bowl 56. This is who I'm tailgating with right here. All I did was dip this and oh. this, and we got that. It's time to kick off our 70th anniversary celebration. Cheers to everyone. It's a brighter third. That's right, it's the Polar Bear Plunge. Talk about your weather app. Let it snow, baby. Hi.
welcome to the making of today. It's where we reveal the secrets on how we put our little show together. And <laughs> as you just saw, we started off 2022 on a strong note. Plenty of big events, interviews, memorable moments. And we are happy to bring you all the behind the scenes things with my pals, Dylan and Chanel. Oh, we're Yay. happy to be doing this with you. And he's this Al Roker. Is, of course. This yeah. is oh so exciting. We can't wait to share what goes into making our TV magic. But let's start with what we and the whole country had our eyes on for the last two weeks, the Winter Olympics. It was definitely thrilling to watch the finest athletes in the world compete in these winter games. And while you see the sights and sounds of the Olympic Park, it actually does take a TV village and then some to produce hours and hours of Olympic broadcasts. Craig, take takes us behind the scenes. The Olympics are always about superlatives. Does it get any more precise than that? Athletes have been practicing and competing for years just to make it here. The most fun thing is front row seat to history. So we thought we'd share our own TV production marathon. You got it, one, two, three, four, five. Behind the scenes of the Winter Games. Hey, Craig, morning. Hello to Savannah, good morning. The highly anticipated women's figure skating short program uh, has been underway behind it. First up, nearly 19 hours in the air to Beijing. Just getting to Beijing felt like an Olympic sport. Uh, we've cleared customs. Everyone who touches down in Beijing for the Winter Games is greeted by a hazmat suit wearing welcoming committee. Finally, we made it to the starting line of the Olympics. Over the course of two weeks, there's 200 hours of Olympic coverage across three platforms in six time zones for NBC. We are in our workspace at the International Broadcast Center, which is also called the IBC. We have our Today team here, small but mighty. They are amazing. And then over there, we have the NBC local affiliates. These games are like nothing we've seen before. In fact, sometimes it was hard to see anything at all. No one, just me. So right now we are shooting Craig's life in the bubble spot. We're gonna raise a glass of okay. Team USA. How is it? It's, um, it's a screwdriver. Okay. It's all right. This is terrible. <laughs> what is your most exciting moment so far in Beijing? Nathan Chen, watching him win gold in person and seeing that like sense of relief just like take over his body, it was nice. What's the hardest part about covering these Olympics? Being away from the family, no doubt. Happy Valentine's Day! Oh, oh that's sweet. Right? Hey, you know, get, get me a little bit of a tip. At the end of these very long days and nights, none of this would be possible without our incredible crews. Well, my name is Ray Farmer, this is Randy. Hey guys. I'm Camera, Randy's audio. audio. Ricardo back here, he is the master audio technician. And Sam, you can see, is the main camera operator. 24 7, the show goes on with many more teams of dedicated people around the globe. This is the LA Bureau of the Today Show, where this spot is all going to come together. Bringing it all across the finish line, we produced 36 hours of the Today Show in 17 days. Our executive producer, Tom Mazzarelli. In our own version of the finish line, the control room, where all of the work over in China, back here, in London, everywhere, makes it, gets on the air, this is where it all happens. Uh, just really amazing what they were able to pull off. a lot. Incredible. Uh, and while the Olympics were an extraordinary undertaking inside such a massive bubble, but in the end turned out to be easy compared to scoring <laughs> one of those plush panda mascots, uh, Bing Dwoon Dwoon. Bing yeah. Dwoon Dwoon, yes. Dwoon. And if you did get your hands on one of those, you're probably, I mean, just one in a million. And actually, we had a once-in-a-lifetime event that happened this month, mm -hmm. too, the Winter Olympics and Super Bowl 56, both happening at the same time and both airing on NBC. No! <laughs> Seriously? Yeah! Uh, wow! Yes. So just for you and you at home, the, the team at NBC Sports celebrated with a once-in-a-lifetime event on our show by making it snow in all of all places, Santa Monica, California, and you were right there in the center of the action. That's right. It, it was pretty amazing how this all came together. In just a few hours, they were able to turn an outdoor mall in downtown sunny Santa Monica into a winter wonderland. And here's how it happened. Sunny Santa Monica, California, known for its warm weather and beautiful beaches. But that was about to change. The mission? A crazy one. 
make it snow at an outdoor mall in Santa Monica where the average snowfall is 0.0 inches. That's because it never happens. But we took up the challenge and assembled a team that could pull it off. Al's going to be in Santa Monica. Production manager Kylie Hose and Today Show director Jim Gaines, both at 30 Rock in New York, worked on how to make this look good on TV. And they can actually make it snow. At the Santa Monica Place Mall, where it was a balmy 70 degrees, we had to wait until after shoppers cleared out. Then we went to work. The folks at NBC Sports bringing in eight trucks filled with 40 tons of ice. 12 snowmaking machines were mounted on the roof, giving us the power to make snow on command. All of this to celebrate a once in a lifetime event the Winter Olympics, and the Super Bowl, both airing on NBC. And while the fresh powder was growing by the hour, our L.A. editorial team put the finishing touches on the piece that would air that morning on the Today Show. Talk about your weather app. Editor Tommy Tripodis and associate producer Sammy Davis, working from their homes, got the job done in record time. Talk about your weather app. Woohoo! Let it snow, baby! And after five hours of snowmaking, I got a chance to talk to some of our NBC affiliates from all around the country. It gets chilly here in the, in the but not so chilly. I can't get it. I can't take a pass from uh, my producer Max Paul. A fabulous thing. So here we are. Yes, uh, and and they've got snowballs at the ready. You son of a. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> turned out Max had been choreographing the 95 mile per hour ice balls for weeks. Hey, it's not so hard. That's better. Trying to kill me here, Koosh. After surviving these snowball attacks, the place finally looking like a chilly winter's morning. Al's on the road. He's in Santa Monica, California. That does not look like no, Santa Monica, No, we don't California. believe you. Mission accomplished. Uh, my producer, Max Paul, uh, making basically an ice ball. Oh, and throwing no. Those are the best guys. So, but here's what, <laughs> hopefully Max isn't watching because I've stored several uh, snowballs in my freezer. No way. So that next time I go to L.A., <laughs> it's coming for you, Max. Oh, now, we want to see a behind you. the scenes of how you get them from your freezer oh, to I've got, L.A. I've got technology. He's got there. ways. <laughs> All right, well, speaking of, we showed you how we brought uh, snow to L.A. Well, Hoda and Jenna dove into freezing water for a polar plunge. We're gonna show you how that really played out when we come right back. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Making of Today. So much of what you see on the air with Hoda and Jenna, it's really so fun to watch. But have you ever thought about what it takes to pull off all their stunts and celebrations? Well, you are about to see the making of the coldest and perhaps most playfully controversial <laughs> stunt in a long time. It was the first, likely not the only, annual Hoda and Jenna Polar Plunge. Bundle up as Jenna takes us along for a chilly ride. One of our favorite parts of this job is the excuse to dive into something we wouldn't normally do. 
And this time, we wanted to dive in, literally. <laughs> to celebrate the new year, our producers brainstormed a bucket list series. And top of the list, a polar plunge. It's hard to think of things that they haven't done before. And it's January, so we thought, what about a polar bear plunge? Average temperatures in New York in January hover around 30 degrees, which means our staff was questioning our willingness to commit. No way. I, I was there for the pitch of it, and I said, sure, but there is a 0% chance the ladies will do a polar plunge. Oh, we thought, oh wow, Hoda and Jenna are not gonna do this, they're gonna back out. When they got down here, they seemed a little bit more apprehensive, especially about going in all the way. And then it happened. I'm shocked they're even doing this, because I don't know if I would do it. <laughs> when they get in that moment where it's like, if, if they're gonna go all in or not, they always go all in. Oda and Jenna always surprise me. I couldn't believe it. First of all, I would never do that, and the fact that they could do it made me feel like they were rock stars. That was like the ultimate rock star move. But the reactions to our plunging were mixed. <gasps> Wait, what? <laughs> Sparking a controversy in the now viral moment. You just put your head? <laughs> together. All you did was just put your head no, gently. Don't say all I did. I was all the way soaking wet. It just wasn't as dramatic. I dove under and you just went like this. Even our own staff was split. I think Jenna's right. Hoda cheated. She got her hair wet, which in the cold, getting your hair wet, that's a big deal. But still, you gotta, you gotta go all the way. I know this might be controversial, but I had to watch that piece 15 times because I was the one approving it. And never once in watching it did I think Hoda Kotb did not do a polar plunge. Bucket list item officially checked off, all in a day's work. Honestly, it's, it's amazing that they'll say yes to the crazy stuff we come up with. Because this show is the ultimate girl party. It's invigorating because we can literally come up with anything and they're going to do it. Shout out to the ladies for showing up ready to play, right? Or swim. Yes. Right. Tell them about the shrinkage, Jerry. <laughs> like a frightened turtle. <laughs> you just jump right in there. <laughs> Speaking of diving in, Dylan, that's uh, what you had to do, really diving right in when you returned from maternity leave. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a little tough. Yeah. I mean, you know, baby Rusty arrived earlier than expected. I was able to spend four months with him at home, as well as Cal and Ollie, of course. But after all that quality time with them, I did have to come back to work. And here's a peek of just how my first day went. After four months of maternity leave, it was time for me to go back to Studio 1A. Can you believe I'm going back to work? Yeah, you can't go back to work yet. Why? Yeah. <laughs> because I have to work today. You don't no. want me to go back to work? I don't want mommy to go back to work. Mm. Are you going to miss me? Yeah. yeah. I've got all my clothes laid out. Hi. I'm ready to go. I am like a big preparer the night before, so I've got my coffee here. Muffins made for the boys, so that they've got breakfast tomorrow. I've got all my pump parts ready to go. My outfit's picked out. I guess I'm ready. I'm up by five o'clock the next morning, preparing to leave without waking anyone up. I'm back. I haven't been here in so long. I don't even know what half this stuff is. Once I'm settled in, it's time to get ready. All right, makeup's done. I've got my notes here. I'm um, gonna prep for our interview today with Cynthia Nixon and Christine Bransky. And I have our morning meeting phone call um, now. So I'm gonna call into that. All right, now it is time to go get my hair done. Um, and does anybody recognize this sound? <laughs> Always be pumping, that's what I say. With that, I'm pumped to walk onto the set to start the show. Hello. Hey, hey. I'm here. Good morning, everybody. It's a brighter third hour. Yes. Thank I'm you. Yay. Yay. He's back. Can we just do one thing? Sure. Like, just, shh, 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 shh. I just want to, I just want to play. Okay. Well, I did it. The show's over. Um, and to be honest, it feels like I have never left um, in a good way. 
I just feel like you just jump right back into it and I figured out my routine and it's the same routine that I had um, before I left. I think the difference is I'm going to go home now with three kids instead of two. So I feel like I might get more exhausted later on today. <laughs> I'm back and no more babies. I'm not going away anytime soon. You guys are stuck with me. So after my first day, Calvin comes home with a note, and I'm not sure if it's <laughs> good job, mom, mm -hmm. or good God, mom. Oh, wow. <laughs> either, either way, way either the way. sentiment was there. I was happy, and it's hanging on my wall, so it's nice right. to be back. I like that. We're yes. glad you are back. And, and we celebrated your return, and coming up next, we're going to celebrate the Today Show. It had a momentous milestone. Don't go anywhere. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. NBC News, streaming free now. Allie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Hallie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. We recently had a big anniversary here at Today, 70 years. It was an honor celebrating with you at home and with all of New York City. That's right. And thanks to some help from our good friend, Holly Palmieri, with Today's Show Radio on Sirius XM, we got an inside look at the big milestone. It is a big anniversary. Real big. On January 14th, 2022, the Today Show marking 70 incredible years on the air. But the fun actually started the day before. Here this is go. historic. Hey. When Hoda, Carson, and I got to flip the switch and light up the Empire State Building in honor of this major milestone. To be able to Stand flip the switch and see it go orange incredible. for us. Then it was off to Studio 1A to get to work. Rehearsals are starting. I want to show you what's going on here behind the scenes. On special show days like this, with lots of moving parts, we like to run through everything so that our crew, from everybody in the control room, folks on the set, and of course, our fellow anchors, know what the game plan is before the show gets going. Join us as we look back and toast an American institution. Today, Friday, January 14th, 2022. After rehearsals were done, we reflected on the momentous occasion. It's pretty incredible to be here today. It is never lost on me, yeah. every day. Because right. I grew up watching the show like yeah. so many people. I right. watched Brian Gumble when I was a little boy and I right. thought, you know, maybe, maybe one day, right. maybe one day, and now every day. And to be a part of 70 years of such an American tradition in New York City, it's really like, I've been saying I feel like I'm like Norm or Cliff from yeah. Cheers. Like I just, someone invited me into this, this cool place and yeah. I can sit and hang out. This was actually my idea, to bring back the old school weather chalkboard for my weather hits throughout the morning. So here's the deal. Uh, this is the way we did weather in 1952. Uh, Dave Garraway would get a call from the, the chief meteorologist at what then was called the United States Weather Bureau. 
and on the air, he would tell Dave where to drive, draw the front, and Dave would do it live. He'd draw the lights on, the low pressure, the sunshine, the rain, and of course now we do computer graphics, and, and it's, it, but, but there's something very special about this. And then, showtime. This morning, guys, we're taking time to celebrate those seven decades of informing, inspiring, and hopefully making you smile. A huge celebration for an even bigger day. Let's raise a glass, you guys, to a wonderful program that we all get to be a part of. And a big thanks to all of you who have been watching us at home for 70 years. Oh, Thank you for allowing us to be a part of your family. Coming into your home. Happy 70th today! I mean, 70 is a big one. It is. Yeah. To be part of this iconic program. You've been here since honor. the beginning. Yes, right. <laughs> uh, in fact, I was here when they started building the studio. <laughs> and I said, this Garraway guy, he's not bad. Yeah, when they started building the building. That's right. Yeah, that's what's impressive. All right, besides the 70th anniversary, the Olympics were a pretty big celebration here, of course, which meant we got to open up the plaza again to the crowds, to the guests, and, of course, our favorite, Ah, the yes. Food. Chefs were finally able to come back in person to cook for us, and you wouldn't believe just how much work goes into each short cooking segment. Take a look. You gotta smell these. Can I smell? Here at the Today Show, cooking segments only last about three minutes long. I call it the chicken shake. Chicken shake. But the prep that goes into them can start weeks in advance. It's my job about ideally two or three weeks before the segment airs to connect with the chef, decide on recipes that would be good for the broadcast and that our viewers at home would be interested in making. Once the recipe is decided on, the segment producer passes it along to our culinary producer and food stylist, Katie Stillo. My job is to make culinary magic every single day. So from the recipe, we take that and we turn it into our food breakdown, which is where we write each individual step that the chef will be performing on live TV. It's Katie's job to shop for the ingredients and pull all of the necessary cooking equipment for each recipe. This room is full of endless amounts of bowls, plates, cookware, anything you could think of, we have it. Some of the food is prepped the day before, and the rest is cooked the morning of the segment. That's also where the collaboration with our set design team is on full display. Hi, I'm Ed Helbing, production designer for the Today Show. Uh, my team does all the set design for food segments. Generally, they're sort of formulaic, but with bigger things like the Super Bowl, we do a lot of decorations for the tables, some backgrounds, and just get to dress it up a little bit. Okay. A little bit of soy sauce just Finally, it's time for this segment to air. Yu is phonetically similar to a word that represents uh, prosperity and abundance. So it's everything great. has meaning and everything has so much thought behind it. Sharing a meal together live feels so good. Cold fingers, warm hearts, you know that type of thing. It reminds me of Chinese New Year when the family gets together and we're all cooking together and hanging out next to the hot pot. But the hardest part? <laughs> Putting the fork down and moving to the next segment. That is insane. Wow. This is amazing. We love getting to dig in and trying these amazing dishes. When we come back, we're going to dig in and answer some questions from our fans who joined us on the plaza. We'll be right back. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. 
Welcome back. Now it's part of the show where we answer some of your questions. This time we got fans out on our plaza, our Olympic plaza at the time, to participate. I'm about to graduate from college and I was wondering about your best advice on following your dreams. So what do you say? Your best advice on following your dreams. You know, it to be open. To mm -hmm. do everything, you know. I wanted to be work in television. Mm -hmm. I want, didn't want to be on TV. Uh, and my department chairman put me up for a job in the sophomore year doing television weather, and I thought, oh, whatever. Mm -hmm. okay. And it worked out okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, Deborah. Deborah was a theater major. And, oh, really? Uh, I didn't know that. that. Switched to journalism. I didn't know that. Well, I, I think that is yeah. such good advice because you know, especially I took the route where I went to the small markets, you know, but I had to leave home that first. Yeah moment where it's like, oh, I have to move on my own and live by myself in a city I've never been to before, Erie, Pennsylvania. But I'm glad I did it. Your your life in your 20s is in your full life, you know, right. so I know you're going to miss your friends. I know you're going to miss, you know, everything you're so used to, but you have to just take that chance to try something yep. and you can always come back. I want to know what's your favorite rom-com Okay, so your favorite rom com? I think we know yours. My best friend's wedding yes. in Notting Hill. Okay. I, I love Julia oh, two. Roberts. Two. Yeah, I just love Julia Roberts uh -huh. in Notting Hill, yeah. and it's just funny. See, and I love like anything with Tom Hanks. So to me, you've got mail, uh -huh. almost the same as Sleepless in Seattle. Like, right. those are my That's favorite cute. rom coms. I can uh, see that. I love Hitch. You know, uh, mm -hmm. just uh, this is where you live. What was your first date like? First That's a date. fun question. My, I remember mine because, so Brian and I, if, if you follow us on Instagram, you know that like we can be socially awkward sometimes. So we went out for brunch and we met up and we're at a restaurant in Boston, like all the tables are really close together, yeah. kind of like in New York City. So he had to kind of like scoot between the tables, but a girl had her purse there. So as he's getting to his seat, he steps in her purse oh. and he goes, would you look at that? My foot is in your purse. <laughs> And you laughed? And, was, and I thought it was the funniest thing. I couldn't stop laughing. It was like the best way what, the to start off a first date. She was in shock. She's oh. like, you know. But and he Uche. had you at hello. Uche and your So ours was a little different because do you date when you're 17 and 19? I mean, you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there was a restaurant called Yesterday's, and they would hand out these little $2 bucks, huh. but you didn't have to max out. So if right. you got like $20 worth of these free bucks, right. you could go to dinner. So oh. we had free bucks, and we went to the <laughs> You pulled dinner. your bucks? And the Simpsons were on behind my head. Oh. And I remember <laughs> him watching the Simpsons. Wow, he was and, riveted by it. Huh? And 15, 20 years later. He's still watching the if Simpsons? If it's something behind my head, he might just look down, I'm just kidding. No! <laughs> what about you? What about you? Uh, we went to a restaurant, uh, it just opened up here. It's been around forever now, but it's called Michael's. Okay. Uh, and it was kind of like this kind of great old school restaurant. Loved it. So. We have reservations there tomorrow night. There no you way. go. Tell them I said hi. <laughs> I will. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, that was fun. That was okay. fun. All right. We're just about done with this special. But if you want more behind the scenes of today, sign up for Today Insider. You'll get a weekly email including early access to steals and deals, giveaways, and oh, so much more. Just go to today.com slash insider. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Come back again. Pastry. What are you doing? Um, can we not put your face in the dough? I'm glad it's just us eating it. Hi everybody and welcome to Dylan Dishes, Cooking with Cal. I can't wait to take a look back at some of my favorite Cooking with Cal segments and offer just a few of those tips and tricks that didn't quite make it into the original episode. In today's episode, we are all about apples. Everyone in my family loves apples, and I use them in so many different recipes in so many different ways. Just ask Ollie. 
Mm -hmm. I love taking the boys apple picking. I don't know why it ends up being one of the most stressful days. Um, you know, somebody has to go to the bathroom, somebody's hungry. Uh, there's no parking because the <laughs> apple orchards are so crowded outside of New York City, but I am determined to always take the boys apple picking. I just think it's fun once you kind of go along that row and there's nobody else around for a little while and you pick the best apples, you kind of sneak a bite here and there. And the best part is I make so many different things with apples that I love bringing a big bushel of apples home and just seeing what we can do with them. For anyone else who went apple picking recently, here are two easy ways to use up all those apples. First up, my crunchy apple salad. Cal has a list of the ingredients you'll need for this recipe. So let's go through the ingredients, okay? What's in our apple salad? Apple. And zucchini. <laughs> Try again, not zucchini. Salad? So close. Celery. Celery. <laughs> and what are these? I think you know. Cranberry. You've been snacking on those since we started. Do you know what this is? A nut. It's a walnut. Walnut. And then you know this one. Yogurt. Lots of vanilla yogurt. So this apple salad is a perfect after school snack. It's a good breakfast. It's just a good all around nice healthy alternative. How's the yogurt doing? Do you want a spoon? Gross. You want to help me with the apple? Let me, let me cut it up into a smaller piece for you. You are actually eating all of my ingredients. No, not that many. Chop it up nice and small. You're doing a lot more eating than cooking. What's your favorite fruit? Apple. <laughs> I'm growing it and it's really hard. While you do that, I'm going to chop up the celery. Okay. I like to make the celery really small. Why? so that it's not too hard to chew. Oh. So Kevin, when I was little, yeah. I used to eat this all the time, every single morning for breakfast. Was that a long time ago? It was a long time ago. Even when I first moved to New York, I used to eat it all the time, every morning for breakfast. Yeah, eat that here. Mix it up. Yep, yeah, mix it all together. All right, what should we put in next? How about some of these? Yeah, sure. Sprinkle those all in there? I can pour it. Okay. Perfect. And now let's chop these up a little smaller. Just rock your knife back and forth. <laughs> Look at how small I made these. Whoa. So now we got all our ingredients in here, right? And here's the fun part. There you go. This is the medium one or the biggest one? What, bowl or a spoon? Spoon. That's the small one. I have to lick it off. <laughs> Did you have to lick it off? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because there's yogurt on it. <laughs> so you can add as much yogurt as you want. It's not really a measurement here. It's more just once everything is all nice and combined. Sometimes I'll add blueberries in here. Oh, I have to lick it off. Oh. I just eat it off. So that's it, super simple, right? I usually make a big bowl of this and then just scoop it out in the morning or you can divvy it up into little Tupperware containers and it's good to go as a grab and go snack. Are we done? That's it, that's all we have to do. Are you gonna taste one? I'm gonna taste one too. A taste test? It's a taste test. <laughs> <laughs> and what spoon should I use? Mm. Mm. Is it healthy? It's very healthy. Up next, we are taking apples from sweet to sweeter with one of my favorite fall treats, apple dumplings with a homemade caramel sauce. You don't wanna miss this. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. 
This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. Hallie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News now. NBC News, streaming free now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free. Now, Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Till and Dishes, Cooking with Cal. Today's episode is all about using a favorite fall staple, apples. Next up, Cal and I are making apple dumplings with a homemade caramel sauce. This recipe takes a bit more time, a bit more patience, but I promise it's worth it. I first saw this recipe in Better Homes and Gardens' new cookbook. So here's how to make one of my favorite fall treats. There are a lot of steps, but it's still pretty easy, okay? There's only three things. We need the caramel sauce that goes on top, We've got the apples that we're going to fill with this little filling, and we're going to wrap it in pastry dough. So let's get started. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> this is a hot apple. That's a nice apple. You said the water? She can't eat everything. Pour in the sugar. Mom? Yes? 
And I'm just gonna do half this cinnamon, not all of it. So I'm gonna bring this up to a boil and this is gonna be our caramel sauce. We still have some things to do. You ready to make the filling? All right, what do you think those are? Mm -hmm. Walnuts. Walnuts. And what are those? Raisins. Raisins. I'm gonna add honey. Add a tablespoon of honey. This is gonna be our filling for the apples. Dump the salt into the flour. All the salt? Yep. Yeah. Do you know what this is? Mm -mm. What do you think it is? I don't know. This is called a shortening. You wanna make the shortening look like little bits of peas in here. What happens if we eat it? It would taste disgusting. Ready? Like press it down and twist. There you go. Press and twist. Press it hard. All right, now we're gonna add the half and half. Now can I pour it? <clears throat> what are we making? Apple dumplings, remember? Oh, yummy? Yeah. Is it dessert? It is a dessert. When it's done, can I eat one of it? Of course. And you? Yes. It smells so good. Oh, it smells like pastry. What are you doing? Um, can we not put your face in the dough? I'm glad it's just us eating it. All right, here we go with our dough. Oh no, we make the hole. No, um, don't make a hole! Why? Because no more holes, no holes. I need you to start here. Okay. And end all the way over here. Nice. You put the apple here. Can you take a little bit of this? This is our hiding spot. A little cinnamon sugar. I'm gonna pour this sauce over the dumplings. Carefully. Mm. Do you love it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you wanna make this apple dumpling recipe right away, you might be thinking I don't have an apple core like I used, um, but there is a way you can just cut right through the apple. It's, it's tedious, I'll tell you that. In fact, I held off making this recipe until I ordered one of these. <laughs> um, wherever you get you know, kitchen supplies, it's an easy order. Just wait a couple days until it gets there. But if you don't have patience, um, just be careful. And I wouldn't recommend doing this part with the kids because you need a very sharp knife and you literally just have to cut around the core of the apple. So make sure you go all the way to the bottom. This is probably the worst part of the whole recipe, is coring the apple. Just wanna make sure we get to the other side. My kids eat a lot of apples, and whether I'm slicing them or dicing them or doing whatever it is with apples, there's just no good way to get the seeds out. But this, this works pretty well. Okay, so you can either do it that way if you don't have patience, although I think this way is the way to go. So this is what an apple core does. Basically the same thing the knife did, just in all one big swoop. Can you get it in there? Twist it, pull it up, and there you go. That was easier, right? So I'd recommend just holding off a couple days on this recipe and wait till you get your apple core. I mean, because that's perfect. So to core the apple with a knife, you wanna make sure you use a paring knife. They're nice and sharp, they're tiny. If you use anything bigger, I feel like you're gonna cut the whole apple up. Um, and a steak knife would just never work for this. So get yourself a paring knife too. <laughs> For all these recipes, go to today.com slash Dylan Dishes. I'll do the chocolate chips. No, I want to. No. Fine. Yay. Let's, do the Let's pour it at the same time, Alexander. Three, Three two, two, one. Whee! My name's Alexander Charbonnet, and this is Kids in the Kitchen. My name 
is Alexander Charbonnet. I'm seven years old and I'm in second grade. I started cooking when I was five for my mom and my dad and my sister. I started my cooking channel two years ago when I was five. Hi guys, hi friends, welcome to my show. Kids can cook with Chef Alexander. We are making banana muffins with no egg. Cause I'm allergic to egg. My egg allergy um, makes me sad, but I'm more sad because I can eat stuff like other people. Because of my allergy, I can't eat cookies or donuts or like cakes or like a lot of stuff. My mom is awesome because she makes eggless stuff like cookies, cupcakes, and regular cakes. But my mom and I bring um, treats like cookies without egg to school with me so I can enjoy it with my friends. My little sister has a peanut allergy. She can have like peanut butter and jelly. So I feel like she's a special too. My mom was the one who taught me how to cook. Um, my favorite part of cooking is I get to spend special time with my mom cooking. My favorite hobbies are playing video games, um, riding my bike, riding my scooter. Um, I also really love dinosaurs. Here's some, a fact of some dinosaurs. Did you know that the Allosaurus does, doesn't have serrated teeth? And it actually uses jaw. He, he opens his mouth and he slashes his upper jaw into its prey like a hammer. We are making donut chocolate donut cakes. So we have this flour, so we're gonna dump it into the sieve. <laughs> I wanna be a pastry chef because I'm already a pastry chef. I am so excited because today we are making eggless trini macaroni and pie and blender muffins with apples, bananas, and carrots. First we're going to start with the macaroni and pie. Here's everything we need to start with. We got butter, we got olive oil, cut up onions, onion powder, garlic powder, black pepper, flour, mustard, cheese, salt, but we also need elbow and pasta and milk. First we're gonna make the cheese sauce. First we're gonna melt the, the butter the, and the olive oil over medium heat. Now the next step, we need to add the onions. Make sure you cook it for a few minutes because we don't want the smell of the onions to make us cry. The next step, you need to add the flour and you need to make a roux. A roux is fat mixed with flour. You need to um, whisk it so it doesn't give that raw flour taste. That would taste horrible. This is what's gonna Thicken the sauce since I'm not using egg. Now we need to add the milk to the pot, but make sure to add it slowly because we don't want it to spot all over the place. Now we need to whisk it until it's fully incorporated. Next, we're gonna add the mustard. Now we're ready to put in the spices. We got our onion powder, the garlic powder in, and the black pepper in. And the salt, let's put in the salt too. Bubbling, it looks like lava. This is what we're looking for. I wish you guys can smell this. Cause that really smells good. Now for the best part, we put in the cheese. Now we're going back to mixing. The sauce looks like this. 
this is a little hot, so you know who I need? Mommy! Almost there, up. It's important to incorporate the pasta into the cheese sauce. We're gonna put in a grease baking dish and then we're gonna top it off with cheese. This looks great. Now we're just gonna add some cheese to on the top. I need to pop this in the oven, so I need to call mom again. Mom! Oh, it looks good. Okay, I'm gonna open the oven. Okay. Thanks, mom. Oh no, thank you. Good job. We're gonna let it bake for 25 or 30 minutes. This looks awesome. It wouldn't be complete without my favorite person. Mmm. Mm. Yeah. We come from a long line of foodies in our family, a long line of cooks, and you're just carrying on that tradition by continuing to be one of the chefs in our family. <laughs> now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Ali Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. NBC News. Streaming free. Now. NBC News. Streaming free. Now. Ali Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free, now. Now we're gonna make one of my favorite recipes, blender muffins without egg. They have apples, carrots, and bananas, but to help me, I'm gonna have my sister, Natalie. Come on. Boing. So, we're gonna make, introduce yourself, Nellie. Okay, so my name is Natalie, and I'm going in kindergarten soon. And my, my favorite food is fruits and vegetables. Five, I'm five. And I'm Alexander's sister. And my nickname and, is Peanut. And her nickname's Peanut, but she has a peanut allergy. But this also has um, no eggs, so it's Isn't that funny, guys? Now we have this big mixing bowl, so now we're gonna put in all our dry ingredients. Let's start with the flour. Put in the brown sugar. Oh, flop. Oh, there's still some. There you go. Put it back. Now we need to put in the white sugar. Now, now we put in baking powder. And My now turn. Let's put in baking soda. Now let's put in some soda. cinnamon, like for cinnamon rolls. Let's mix. Let's make blender muffins. Mix, 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 mix up. <laughs> Agitate around. Okay. Okay. Your turn. 
Now we need the blender. And now we're going to ask mom for the blender. Mom! Now we're going to add the, the apples, the carrots, and bananas to the blender. Let's start with the apples. Yeah. Blop, blop. It's time for carrot time. And guys, in case you know, these are for our bunnies, but we use them for baking now. Let's put the banana peel in. Break it in half and then put the other half in. That might be smart. <laughs> it looks it's weird. Blender. I'm trying to get the ones in the on the back. Maybe we should do it together. Let's mix and agitate, agitate, agitate. Let's mix and agitate. Let's do that. Mm -mm -mm. Now let's add. I'll add the Put butter. Let's do it. Three, two, one. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I'll do the chocolate chips. No, I want to. No. Fine. Let's, do, let's pour it at the same time, Anza. Three, two, one. Whee! Wait, the oats. Oh, this looks good. Now we have our muffin tin. Yep. We get to spray our muffin tin. Yeah, we need to do it three quarter way full. How about you scoop in and I put it in? These are ready to go in the oven now. And now let's get mom. Now it's gonna take 18 to 22 minutes. Bye, we'll see you on the next step. I get my, I just want to gobble them all up when I'm out. These have been cooling for 10 minutes, so they're ready to eat. makes the yummy drink.
Welcome to Together We Rise. I'm Chanel Jones. Today we're exploring and celebrating health and wellness in the black community. From maternal health and postpartum care to a yoga community created by and for black men. And we'll introduce you to a 32 year old woman who is shaking up the beauty industry with her line of inclusive clean makeup. We start though with an important movement, one to eliminate racial disparities in maternal health. Listen to this, black women are three times more likely to die from a pregnancy related cause than white women. That's according to the CDC. Midwife Rebecca Polston and the Roots Community Birth Center in Minneapolis are working to change that statistic, providing a birth environment centered on black joy in all four trimesters of pregnancy. Rebecca Polston has been on a mission. I was personally always interested and fascinated and called to birth and the childbirth experience and reproductive choices that black women like myself were experiencing. I kept learning about what it means and what health disparities actually mean. Six years ago, Rebecca founded Roots Community Birth Center in North Minneapolis, providing prenatal delivery and postpartum care. One of the ways that Roots Community Birth Center is changing the conversation about Black maternal mortality and changing the way we do the care is by seeing instead of our Blackness as a source of illness, but as a source of strength. It's your body, it's your baby. You get to decide what's right for you. My job is to be a steward. Mom of five and soon to be six, Iola Kachruski understands that care Rebecca speaks of. So I walked into Roots and I felt the sense of being at home. And to acknowledge someone by their name when they walk into the room is a very powerful thing, especially within a community who in many different parts of society, we're not valued as human beings. Iola says an unpleasant experience during the hospital birth of her third child made her rethink the process. I did not feel validated. Um, I did not feel empowered. Um, I was not happy after my birth. Um, it, what should be a joyous moment was met with um, what felt shame, like a deep sense of shame um, of there's clearly something wrong with me if my provider did not listen to me. But Roots was different. The care and attention from Roots succeeds what a hospital could have ever given. They're in your home the midwife comes back to see you. It is an actual conversation. It is, how are you? Check in with me. Um, and we will focus on baby. With Rebecca, it was sincere checking in. Rebecca's approach is a gentle solution to a tough problem, addressing the many reasons black mothers are at greater risk, stress, systemic racism, and lower quality care. The meat of what systemic racism actually is, is that it's not what people are doing, but it's their experience in a system that doesn't see them, respect them, or hold on to their humanity. Now, that doesn't mean that every person who works in every mainstream healthcare system is inherently racist or a horrible person at all. But that's what systemic racism does and why it hurts all of us is because it's so big and it's so pervasive that it's hard to put your finger on. Health workers and activists across the country consider Rebecca a role model. Her birth center is grounded in a racial justice framework. I think bringing together community, local health systems and providers, academics. So the folks she has at the table are helping to change the conversation and amplify the work. That work is changing lives. I think the importance of models like Roots and what we're doing here come from at least my fundamental belief that birth is always transformative, but it is transformative for better or for worse. And I want it to be transformative for better. Every time a baby is born, you're not just giving birth to a baby, you're giving birth to a family, you're giving birth to parents, you're making someone a grandparent, someone an aunt, so whenever we give birth, we are creating the very world that we say that we want and how that happens matters. So if those can happen with love and respect and safety, then imagine what kind of world we can have. 
Thank you to Rebecca Polson and the amazing women for sharing their experiences. Moving on to the next stage of motherhood, those early newborn days, often called the fourth trimester, full of many physical and emotional changes for both mom and baby. In 2016, Simona Noche Wright and Nikki Ose Barrett noticed a lack of community for black mothers of young children. They took matters into their own hands, creating District Mother Hude, a community for millennial moms of color in the D.C. metro area that has grown to more than 22,000 members strong. Simona and Nikki join us now. Ladies, welcome. Thank you for talking with us today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having us. I can't, wait to, I can't wait to have this conversation. Absolutely. Simona, let me start with you. Can you talk a little bit about why you decided to start District Mother Hugh and what you guys were looking for that didn't already exist? Yeah, so our friendship is actually as young or as old as District Mother Hude. We recognized that the D.C. metro area was the place to be for like black professionals or black politicals. But when you transition into that family space, there wasn't this highlight or this emphasis on black motherhood. And we were here. So we met up for coffee. We didn't know each other. We were actually social media friends. We decided to throw one event called the Mom Loft just to see if it would be a thing because we, we like to go to brunch and like to go to happy hour and we just needed community to navigate this new space in our life. So we ended up throwing our one event. 25 moms came. We just created the page on social media. In one day, we came up like with the name, the website, the logo. Her girlfriend was a, a graphic designer and we just did it. And 25, I, we still remember how electrifying that evening was to see all these black moms that were like, oh, it's a thing. Like, we are here, it's mm. a thing. And now we're 22,000 moms strong, 50 plus events sold mm -hmm. out and an, an annual conference that brings 700 moms across the nation to DC. Mm -hmm. My goodness, Nikki, 22,000 moms on your platform. Did you ever think at that first copy that it would grow into what it is today? Not at all, but after that first event, we realized we're onto something and that we were truly filling a void in the DMV area and in the motherhood space. And actually, it evolved from that one-off event quickly into a social org. Like, we talked about beyond this event, what are we doing? How are we impacting the community? How are we helping the moms that are gonna be a part of our community? And that's how we came up with the name District Mother Hugh. So it is, it was a social org, and then it quickly transitioned to become a nonprofit, so. Yeah, on that note, Simona, can you talk about the programs that you have geared toward those fourth trimester moms, if you will, and why it's so important for them? Yeah, absolutely. So we always say, you know, it's, everyone says it takes a, a village to raise a child, but really it takes a village to raise a mom. And if the mom is not okay, then the children cannot be okay. So we exist purely to walk alongside black mothers during their journey by providing the Mommy and Me weekly walks. We talk about like postpartum health and just getting out once a week to meet other women that look like you, breathing that fresh air, talking mm -hmm. to another adult does wonders for your um, community and for your mind. We also have a four week new mama program where we highlight everything from um, lactation, uh, uh, breastfeeding, the basics, who the doctors are in the area, just so that these moms feel like Hey, I'm supported. We have a baby sprinkle because some people have big families. They don't they don't even know how to create a registry. And we are existing to support them in that way. And um, we also do meal trains. So mm -hmm. we provide six week meal trains to our moms. My girlfriends did it for me. And every mom needs a meal train to navigate this space and boobs in the park. We get all the moms together. We get lactation uh, lactation consultants. Yeah. We work with some of the largest breastfeeding brands and we have black Black IBCLCs, that's an international board, board certified lactation consultant. They'll come in and they'll talk about what it takes to become an IBCLC, why it's so important to have an IBCLC that looks like you, and they just provide resources mm -hmm. and conversation. We breastfeed in the park. So, yes. <laughs> so, so important. If we take a step back for a moment, because the reality is there are people who are watching all over the country and maybe moms who are watching. What have you learned about motherhood or some words of wisdom that you can part to, to impart to maybe someone who's listening, Nikki? The number one thing I would say is that community is so, so important. You are not made to mother alone. So seek a community, whether it's a virtual community, because that's how District Mother Heath started, um, just through our virtual programming and then our one-off event, and then it grew. So maybe it's a virtual community, or maybe if you don't have that community, create it yourself, because we created a community that we wish that we had. So maybe just put out a call on Instagram and say, hey, I want to meet some local moms for coffee 
and then begin to foster those relationships. But ultimately, find your mom tribe and love them hard, and they will support you at every stage of your motherhood journey. I love that. Simone and Nikki, it was such a pleasure talking with you. I'm sure we'll be talking again. Now that I know you exist and I think it's amazing, I'm sure we will stay connected. Have to come to the I would love to. I would love to. All right. Thank you, guys. All the best. Thank, thank you, you so you. much. Bye. All right. Up next, my friend Al Roker explores an unexpected brotherhood. NBC News, streaming free now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. Welcome back to Together We Rise, celebrating health and wellness in the black community. My fellow Today Show co-anchor Al Roker brings us our next story about two friends who unexpectedly started a movement to help black men live their best life holistically. The power of relationships is one of the greatest currencies that any of us can have. And the relationships that have been born out of this organization have been unmatched. For 36-year-old Tristan Lewis and Andrew Smith, 32, the lockdown during the summer of 2020 was both too quiet too loud. The stay-at-home advisory is meant to slow coronavirus. The headlines only grow more worrisome. No As the unfolding nationwide protests created a vacuum of stress and anxiety. So guys, I'm curious, uh, how did you both get into yoga? That story really starts at the crux of 2020. The death of basketball legend Kobe Bryant sending shockwaves through the sports world and beyond. We experienced the loss of NBA legend Kobe Bryant. Months later, we experienced a, a global pandemic and then also all the civil unrest that was happening across the country. And um, when George Floyd's passing occurred, um, we were going through a lot of different stuff, as Tristan said, a lot of different traumas. Um, and Tristan had the idea that we needed to do something that was gonna be good for our mind, our body, and our soul. The two friends asking a yoga teacher to conduct a class in Chicago as a one-time event on a Sunday. Word quickly spreading and students immediately asking for more. After this session, multiple guys came up and told Andrew and I, this is something that I didn't realize I needed. So we, we realized that we tapped into something in that moment. When black guys are gonna get together, you know, usually it's some, something very physical and it involves some trash talk, some smack. So were you surprised at, at, at how much you needed this? I was incredibly surprised. One of the things that I needed most was community. Um, I needed to be around my brothers. And one of the things that we have noticed is that there's a lack of black men who are teaching yoga. You know, when you enter into a room as a black man, you're scanning the room real quickly and seeing who is there that looks like you, right? Tristan and Andrew say they noticed the classes were creating friendships based on openness, and honesty. And with this being a mental health practice, it opened up the door for us to talk about the issues that we were going through. It opened up the door for us to be transparent and to be vulnerable. So those things just expounded uh, the practice as a whole and brought more brothers into the fold. Before they knew it, a class that began with 20 guys quickly grew into a new nonprofit, The Healing, a space dedicated to helping black men become their best selves. Generationally, 
there's been a lot of stigmas and stereotypes when it pertains to black men uh, being vulnerable or even just what a black man is supposed to be. So I think there is something encouraging when a guy can show up and lower his shame and be open and honest about exactly where he is in his life. And I think normalizing that behavior has definitely had an impact on the guys in our community. Tristan and Andrew saying they've also made counselors and therapists available to the community. Has it occurred to you that if this pandemic hadn't happened, if we weren't put into this position, that this program probably would have never happened? A hundred percent. You know, I think what the pandemic offered was a sense of stillness that I don't think we would have had if the pandemic didn't shut things down. While running the healing keeps them busy, Tristan works in IT and Andrew, a financial advisor, but both intending to practice what they preach. Do I understand correctly that you're both now inspired, you're getting certified as yoga instructors? That's correct. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, just truly grateful that we're able to steward what it is that we have right now. Namaste to some great men doing some great work. Coming up next, Peloton's powerhouse instructor, Tunde Oyunane, will inspire all of us with her weight loss journey. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. NBC News, streaming free now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back, fitness guru Tunde Oyunane inspires millions with her sculpted arms and adrenaline filled classes. You'd never guess that she had a rocky road to wellness. Peloton instructor and author of the soon to be released memoir, Speak. She joins us today to share her journey to being healthy and fit. Tunde, welcome. Thank you for talking with us. Thank you so much for having me. Hi. Uh, you know what, I will tell you, people will see you and they see that you're fit and you're healthy and you're leading these classes. And sometimes we just assume, oh, she just, she's skinny. She just has always been that way and healthy. But you're very unapologetic about talking about the fact that it wasn't always that way. I know you grew up in a Nigerian home in Katy, Texas. Take me back a little bit. Did you guys talk about fitness and, and kind of what happened to change your mindset over the years? Well, I mean, it was kind of a, a double a double whammy. So I grew up in Houston, Texas. If you know anything about Houston, Texas, we love to eat, we love food. And then I grew up with Nigerian parents. Again, Nigerians, we love to eat, we love food. Uh, movement wasn't something that I was familiar, familiar with. One of my mm -hmm. teammates, Robin Arzar, she's the VP of fitness at Peloton, and she always jokes and says that she was allergic to fitness growing up. And I'm like, if she was allergic to it, I had that same exact thing. It's just movement wasn't part of my, my story. You know what it is? A lot of us know 
about dieting, right? We know if we have an event coming up down the line, we know how to lose five, 10 pounds, but this is different. This is a lifestyle. This is a mentality. This is a, you know, when you talk about fitness, it's, it's the umbrella, if you will. How did you start to change your mindset? I'm asking because I know there are people watching like me who think, okay, maybe I'll do it for a month or so and then we fall off. How did you get it to where it's, it's a true lifestyle? You know, for me, it, it really is a forever change. I'm so happy that you say it. It's not something that you do for a little while and then expect forever results. It's a forever process. Uh, I say that, you know, it comes down to you have to want to do it for you. My, my turning point was I was actually supposed to be a bridesmaid in my aunt's wedding. And I'll never forget, I went to the bridal shop with my mother and my aunt. And the dress that I was supposed to wear was a blue dress. It was a hideous, hideous, hideous dress, but it was a dress that my aunt wanted us to wear. And so the dress didn't come in my size at the bridal shop. And as a result what of that, my size? aunt suggested that I wear. I think I was maybe like a size 18 at the time. And which they should have had my dress in the size, but the, the, the designer didn't make a size 18 dress. And so, my, the, as a result, my aunt suggests that I wear a different dress, a dress that's much more beautiful, double the price, and she's going to pay for it. And so I'm saying I don't want to wear that dress. My mother is hitting me like she's going to buy this dress and it's prettier. Why would you not take it? And I turned to my mother and I said, if I wear a different dress, everyone's going to know that I was the one that was wearing a different dress because I couldn't fit in the dress that all the skinny mm. girls were wearing. And for me, it was just this moment. And my mother looked at me. I think my mother at that time, it was when she realized truly how much this was affecting me because I tried to hide that I cared. And so she looked at me and she said, Gay Tunde, if you want change, then you're going to have to change things up. If you want to change, you have to change things up. And you know, people often ask me now, like, how do you stay motivated? What is what is the motivating factor? To me, determination is motivation. If you can stay dedicated to something, your dedication alone to any said thing will motivate you to show up for it. And so I was dedicated to change. And and so I, I started to change. Well, it's Black History Month. We're focusing uh, this episode on health and wellness uh, and, and for men and women. What's your message, especially to communities of color? What do you want people to learn from your story? Yeah, I mean, I, to, to, to all communities and specifically communities of color, I think that so much comes down to assess, accessibility and the knowledge. I didn't know the food, the reaction that the food was having that I was putting in my body, the choices that I was making. You know, I'm proud to say that I work for a company that I wholeheartedly believe and I think that so much in terms of moon and fitness comes down to accessibility and finally we're all so busy everybody's busy how do you make it a priority how do you keep it on the front burner of your life if you will I think the biggest thing with working out in fitness is people say okay I have to work out for 60 minutes or I have to work out for 45 minutes and if you can't find the time to carve out 45 to 60 minutes then often it's so easy to say I just can't do it today I don't have the time Use the time that you have. If you have 15 minutes, rather than saying I only have 15 minutes, say I have 15 minutes. I can see why your your classes are hit. Thank you so much, Tunde Yane. I'm I'm promising you, I'm gonna I'm gonna get back on it. I'm here with you, girl. Well, what, Al is the <laughs> ringleader here. Al, is I know. The I'm telling you, he. He started talking about you a long time ago. And I said, I'm not on Peloton. I don't. He's like, I'm telling you. He's like, even if you don't have a bike, you need to check out this woman. So I'm glad now that we're doing you, uh, featuring you on the show. So the whole, the whole world can see now. I'm with you <laughs> Thank now. you, too, Dan. All you. right, all right. Coming up after the break, we're gonna introduce you to an entrepreneur who is shaking up the beauty industry. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free. Now, Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Prince. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now.
Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Together We Rise, exploring health and wellness in the black community. When you look good, you feel good. And no one agrees more than the 32-year-old founder of Ami Cole, the clean beauty brand that caters to and celebrates melanin-rich skin. Today, anchor Hoda Kotb brings us her story. Hello, my name is John and Jai. I am the CEO and founder of Ami Cole, a clean beauty brand made to celebrate melanin-rich skin. Ami Cole is quickly making a name for itself, winning awards from Women's Wear Daily, Refinery29, and Allure, and landing its 32-year-old founder on the pages of the New York Times. We're thinking about the 16-year-old girl who happens to be a darker skin tone, not seeing herself represented, and we literally created that. We grabbed that girl. You know, a lot of people that I grew up with are in our campaign. And we plastered it all over Harlem and New York City to show that you are beautiful as is. Ami Cole is like really has been a genesis of my entire life. My mother owns a hair salon here in Harlem. And as long as I remember, I've been in the shop. So my mom didn't believe in maternity leaves. <laughs> I was on her back. You know, my bassinet was, was right near her and she was braiding. So I was going through purses trying to figure out what lip gloss people were wearing. Um, so always naturally obsessed and kind of born into this space. After graduating from Syracuse, Jada lived Landed opportunities with L'Oreal and Glossier. That's when I really understood that number one, I could do it. <laughs> you know, being there and seeing the, the kind of motions and the mechanics of building a company and a brand. But I was missing that soul. I, I was missing that connection that I had with my girlfriends. And that meant for us, like makeup that made us look like us. You know, not really the art of transformation, but really celebrating who you are just as you are and, and using tools to really enhance that beauty that already exists. So 2019, I put the pencils down and I'm like, am I going to do the crazy thing and start a company? You bet she did. Jada's goal? To create beauty products she felt more closely aligned with her community. So having these products that we poured our heart into by surveying 400 women, by being on the phone, I'm in your makeup cabinets, I'm the annoying friend. <laughs> you know, when we're having brunch, I'll pull out my little tool like, how do you feel about this? And I think that's a really key differentiator. We are deeply inspired by our Senegalese roots. We have key ingredients like baobab seed extract to really nourish the skin and, and treat it almost as a, a treat to skin versus just makeup. For me, it's that no makeup makeup look and that like very intentional celebration of melanin rich skin and that intentionality that this makeup was created for you and with you in mind at the very forefront. It's not an extended shade range. It's you are the target customer. You are who we want to reach. There's different stories, there's different perspectives that needs to be told. And it's very refreshing to see this brand kind of tell a story. That is what makes us feel more connected to it. We're trying to look at the world as half full and be able to celebrate. So we're showing you black and brown people happy as is and smiles. And hopefully that'll inch you a little bit away from that um, idea that you have to be of a lighter skin tone to be beautiful, to be accepted or celebrated. And if you're wondering about the name Ami Kole, it's Jada's way of going back to where it all began. My mother was my first touch point to beauty. So when it came to creating the beauty line, it made sense to name it after my mother. A gesture meaningful to her entire family. My mom, she's just like so happy. So we're all very supportive, very happy, and just extremely proud of her. What makes me an innovator? The fact that I'm able to tap into such a beautiful community and be a great listener and be able to take in and extract what we need and what we want and translate that into actual products has is, is been very um, hard, but also a gift. There's one thing to dream and sleep on it and daydream, but to actually dream it into a vision and create it, what a blessing. I'm so excited. Thank you for joining us for our Together We Rise special. We hope that you were able to discover and learn from some trailblazers changing the conversation around health and wellness in the black community. For more inspiring stories, head to today.com slash black voices. I'm Chanel Jones. 
Thank you. You know, Candace, it's so hard to believe that you first met Bob Saget back when you were 10 years old. You're 45 now. It's been 35 years of knowing and loving Bob Saget. Do you remember the very first time you met him? I do remember. I I do. We were doing our pilot episode for Full House, and Bob is so tall. You know, he's 6'4". And I was 10 years old. I'm still not that much taller <laughs> than when I was 10. But but he kneeled down to me and got eye to eye with me. And he said, hi, I'm Bob. And I'm going to be your dad. I'm playing your dad. So I want you to feel comfortable. And we're going to be friends. And he was just so warm and inviting. And I remember that as a kid. He made me feel instantly comfortable with him and he was just so sweet and it really kicked off an incredible 35 year friendship. Well, for you as a young actress to be able to be yourself, you have to be able to share like what's on your mind, what's on your heart. Mm -hmm. Was he a place that you could go to do that? He was, it's one, one of the things that made Bob so special. Bob was so vulnerable. He was so emotionally available all the time. And he was really the first person in my life as a man that I saw cry and have those emotions right at the forefront of his conversations. And he wasn't afraid of them. He wasn't embarrassed by them. And that's what made your connection with Bob so great. And that's what made mine so great with him because I felt so safe with him. And it was like, there wasn't anything that I couldn't say or share with him. And he would be right in that moment with you. If you were hurting, he would hurt with you. You would see the tears well up in his eyes. He would breathe with you. He just yeah, it was an incredibly available, emotional person. I mean, that's so, I, I, I understand why you didn't forget the moment when you watch a grown man tear up in front of you. Do you remember mm-hmm. anything specific or do you just remember those emotions? Well, there's a, a lot that I remember because we've been friends for so long. And, you know, Bob, Bob has dealt with so much death in his life with his sisters and his uncles and and his parents. So Bob was never afraid to talk about it and show it. And, you know, he always dealt with that in a, in a comedic way, but there was always so much sadness and hurt behind it. And that's how he handled it. So there were many times, I mean, I literally growing up with Bob and not just on television, but we were friends. Like Bob is my whole, not only childhood, but my my teenage years, I mean, we used to go to Jerry's Deli all the time and we just drive around and listen to music. And sometimes we'd have those conversations, like he would just like feel his sister's presence. And we would just sit and feel that, you know, Bob is a remarkable person. And um, I, I just, I've never had a friendship like the one I've had with him. And it, that's what, why it makes it so hard. <laughs> you said Bob is a remarkable person. <laughs> you talk about him like he's here still. I can't, I, I can't believe he's gone forever. I just can't. I, my, my brain has not um, comprehended that yet. Um you know, I think for, for even TV viewers, again, you might think like, oh, he, he played your dad on TV, but Bob was so much more than that. I mean, really one of my closest friends for 35 years. So to, to think that um, he's not here and we're not going to have that last, you know, another joke or another hug or um, just another bit of ridiculousness in life is, is, um, Oh, it's almost unbearable for me to think about. What did you lose when he passed? Um, (laughs) 
Bob was available and there for everyone that he knew. But Bob, Bob was that person that no matter what happened, Bob would drop anything for you in a second, in a heartbeat. And you didn't even have to be his best friend for him to do that. I mean, that's how huge his heart was. But when, you know, being someone that was very close to him, losing him is, um, he, I don't know, selfishly, I just think he's just, he, he was just someone that you could count on and would love you no matter what and just, and be there. And so that's, there are very few friends in life like that. And that is the hardest part of the loss is just that, that friendship that's unconditional that, Mm. I mean, it's, it's Mm. a lifetime, but I guess our lifetime is, you know, finished on earth (laughs) for now. For now. It's a good way to end that sentence for now. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. It's funny because when I watched John Mayer break down and I watched John Stamos and I watched you and I watched all these people in his life, I don't think America realized just how many people he touched. The number of people who have come out, the tributes, the beautiful uh, fundraising events that are going on. I don't think I've seen this in my lifetime with someone in Hollywood that is so universally loved and cared for. And it, you know, it just, it just struck me. He was all that, wasn't he? He really was all that. It is remarkable to me. I mean, I've always known how special he is, his close friends do, but Bob was friends with everyone and, and from, from all walks of life. Mm -hmm. And so to see so many people coming together, I'm glad that the world is getting to hear how much more there was to Bob. Um, He was a great humanitarian. He tirelessly raised money for Scleroderma uh, Research Foundation over the years. Again, he would drop anything for anyone. And he just had a heart of gold. Mm -hmm. And on top of it, he made you laugh. Like he was just, it was the best combination of of all different traits that you could imagine together. And that was Bob. You know, you remember the first time you met him. And I wonder what was the last communication you had with him? Um, It was just a few, just two weeks before he passed. I'm actually gonna grab my my phone. <laughs> I'm so scared that I'm gonna pull up his text and then accidentally delete it one day. Like it scares me so much because <laughs> I don't ever wanna lose this. 
But um, Bob and I talked just a couple weeks before he passed and um, <laughs> we were gonna have dinner and we got into a little tiff and his flight was delayed. We ended up not having dinner, but in, in Bob fashion, the next day he wrote me like what would be pages long of a text. And he was apologizing, saying he was cranky and he was just so, he was just so sorry. And um, he said, oh, now I feel even worse. I was so wrong. You're like my favorite person on the earth. And I acted like Dolly. I was getting ready to take a late flight and I was annoyed. Dolly was his mom. <laughs> and he said, you're one of the few that understands that if I act like Dolly, I'm not the best at my game that day. Ha ha. And Bob went on and on and on in the text. And he said at the end, I love you more. I love you more. Um, for, I love you more for the trouble you're giving me, if that's even possible. And I wrote back, I love you. I could never be mad at you. Roll my eyes at you, yes, but never mad. And I love that you being Dolly, that made me laugh out loud. I loved your mom. And he just wrote back, I loved you. My mom loved you too. How you start things in life and how <laughs> are very important pieces. And that's yeah. a beautiful, beautiful last exchange. I love your sweatshirt. Everyone's talking about your sweatshirt. It says, what, love like Jesus, hug like Bob, Bob is that right? Bob Sackett. Okay, brilliant. A, B, like uh, it's raising money, isn't it? It is actually. I just designed the sweatshirt selfishly for for me. I for Kelly. For I, I made ten of them, and um, you know I don't think there's a a person that can showcase love for the world more than Jesus. But Bob gave the best hugs ever. So those are like the two that have been put on the pedestal for me. Love like Jesus and hug like Bob Saget. And it, it, a bunch of people said, oh, can I get one? Can I get one? So I teamed up with the shop Forward and all the proceeds, 100% of them have gone to the Scleroderma Research Foundation. And we've raised over $200,000 so far. Wow. Yeah. One sweatshirt that you that you got for you and Kelly and the rest. That's amazing. I know. He, you know, I think it was such a shock to everybody when he passed. Did he, and since you were in more communication with him than most, did he seem like healthy, okay? Like I think everyone yes. was Yes. I mean, as I said, we he was he was on the road doing a stand-up. He was just loving it, was healthy, was fine. And yeah, Bob just also was not didn't complain in that way. He just was going and he was on a roll. That's why it was so shocking mm -hmm. because he had done the show that night. I mean, what a way to go in that sense. He, he, he left us, but he had just finished what he loved doing two hours of stand up, which is almost unheard of. He had like an extra long night because he, it was just going so well. Mm -hmm. And that was it. You know, I, that's why it was so, it was so shocking to all of us because there were no there were any signs of that anything would be wrong. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at eight on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. 
You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Was he proud of your career? <laughs> Bob was so proud of my career. He really was. He was a big cheerleader for me. I mean, I know now as a parent, when you watch someone grow up from a child to an adult and see what they've done, he was so incredibly supportive. And that's what was so awesome about Bob because we had this close friendship. And, you know, if people see Bob stand up, they, you know, he has a different side to him in his stand up. It's not family friendly stand up. And so that would always be a question like, how, how can you guys be friends? And it's like, well, I grew up with Bob, so I understand his sense of humor. I too have a sense of humor, <laughs> but I can also separate that person that's, you know, on the stage making jokes to get the laugh and the real heart behind a person and their love and their friendship and their kindness. And, and so Bob was so wonderful in that way and supportive of me and and yet would tell me, like, he would invite me to things all the time in the stand-up world, but then say, you're invited, but don't come. <laughs> don't come because I know you, this will, like, cross a line for you. You're not going to enjoy it. You're not going to laugh. So, like, I love you. You can come if you want to, but don't come. Brilliant. Brilliant. And that's, like, a, what a real friend does. Just lastly, Candice, I know he was proud of your career. We all follow your career. I know you always have another project in the hopper. So are you working on something right now? What do you have that's coming out? I have another Aurora Tea Garden mystery that is airing on February 20th. This is our 18th movie in the franchise. I'm shocked. <laughs> yeah, it's been a lot. That's on the Hallmark Movies and Mysteries channel. And the special thing about this one is called Haunted by Murder. These are all family friendly, by the way. Yeah. You can watch them with your kids, but... This is about a haunted house, and my daughter is actually in this movie. And Lexa Doig, who plays my best friend in the series, her daughter is also in this movie. And the two of them are playing us, our characters, as teenagers. Okay. So we have some flashbacks, and it's like, it's amazing. <laughs> it's really oh, fun. That, that is awesome. Candace, thank you so much. What a beautiful and tender tribute uh, to Bob, boy. Thank you for sharing. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Hoda. NBC News, streaming free now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Prince. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie 
Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. In the wake of the sudden passing of beloved comedian Bob Saget, friends and fans and colleagues have been sharing countless stories of his remarkable kindness and generosity. But for the first time now, we're about to hear from the person who knew him best recently and really just maybe loved him the most, I although there's so. a good competition for that. I'd say so. Kelly Rizzo, what a wonderful, wonderful human being. I got a chance to share an emotional conversation with Kelly. While she says this is the most difficult time in her life, she also says it's also easy to know what her mission will be moving forward. She says it's spreading Bob's legacy of love and laughter. Kelly, first of all, I just want to say the entire country feels like we're holding your hands, your collective hands. I want to know just how you're doing today. Well, I was just telling some of my family that today's a little bit, there's a little bit more of a sense of calm. I think you get to a point where your body will just physically not let you cry anymore, or mm -hmm. at least all day. Still, every second is is horrible, but you start to come to terms with it a little bit. Six years ago, Bob Saget and Kelly Rizzo, a food and travel blogger from Chicago, met after connecting on Instagram. Married since 2018, friends say they had a love for the ages. I'm watching you and you're sitting in your home that you shared with with Bob. And I just wondered if you're remembering all the, the little things, if that pops up. Well, it's impossible here not to, but the support has been, that, that has been the one silver lining from this is the incredible outpouring of love and support, not only from just everybody that loved Bob, but also for me and just from his friends and family, it's been, I don't know how else I'd be getting through this right now. The number of people, Kel, who loved Bob is just, I, I can't even quantify. I heard someone say that Bob was an I love you guy. He put it all out there. He told everyone that he loved. And I mean, quite frankly, anyone he met and even spent any time with at all, he told them he loved them endlessly and tirelessly. And that was his entire message. If you knew Bob, and he loved you, you knew it. There was never, ever a doubt in your mind. I mean, even at his at, at his memorial, there were a lot of people there and every single person was pretty much like, oh, I talked to Bob last week. I'm like, how did he have the time to talk to everybody and tell everybody that he loved them all the time? It was just amazing. We had an interview with with Mike Young, who's, you know, a comedian and dear friend of Bob's. He said something, Kel, that struck um, struck me. He said, most comedians, after a stand-up gig, they catch the last flight home. He said, not Bob. Bob wanted to catch the first flight home. He wanted to be with you, Kelly. And he said that that their love was, was perfect. Yeah. Sorry. Um, that was what was always so special is every time he would be out of town, he would always try to, he would, you know, he would work so hard and he, um, you know, he'd love to sleep in, but when he was away, he would always try to, he would still wake up at, you know, go to bed at two and then wake up at four so he could be on the 6 a.m. flight so he could come home just so we could spend time together. So, you know, he valued every single second that we had together. So that's why it's, you know, this is so heartbreaking. But at the same time, I know that we, you know, every second that we had together was just maximized to the fullest. And we absolutely just, there was nothing, you know, left unsaid and nothing left on the table. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that I'm just trying to hold on to, you know. You know, I feel like everyone felt like they knew Bob because everyone mm -hmm. grew up watching him or, or even young kids now were watching him again on TV. But uh, Kel, who was the Bob Saget like at dinner when there was no audience? It was still the same. And he just tried to make everybody feel special and happy and comfortable. And it's funny, like our, our dry cleaners, he has... I always joke that he had a deeper relationship with them than he had with anybody, you know, like they love him 
and he loved them. And his constant message was just treat everybody with kindness because, you know, he'd gone through so much in his life and he knew how hard life could be. And so he always was just so kind and loving to everybody. And he was just, I'm sorry, he was just such a, he was just the best man I've ever known in my life. And he was just so kind and so wonderful. And everybody that was in his life knew it. <laughs> and even anybody that would just casually meet him was like, wow, this was a special guy. And he was yours. And by all accounts, he was living his best life. Did you think he was feeling okay during during all this time? All I'll say is that he was very happy and he was just thrilled to be back out on the road. And he was also very sensitive and just all the weight of everything going on in the world right now. He, it was just weighing very heavily on him. And that's mm. why he felt more compelled than ever to make people laugh and bring people together. And he did it up until the very last moments. You know, we've all lost someone in our life. And sometimes you hang on to the last text, the last conversation, <laughs> the last connection. Is that is that Kel the case with you? I'm just very grateful that it was all I love you so much. Mm -hmm. It was, I think I said, I love you dearly. And he said, I love you endlessly. And then he mm -hmm. said, I said, I can't wait to see you tomorrow. And then, you know, it was just all very, it was just all love. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's, that is, that's beautiful, Kel. Um, when we were seeing the images of everyone saying goodbye at the funeral, is there anything that you feel comfortable sharing about what it was like? Were you able to speak? I don't think I'll get too much into it, but I did speak and it was just the whole thing as painful as it was, was beautiful to be surrounded by so many people who loved him and who loved each other. And I can't even verbalize the level of support. I'm so grateful for it. One of the things that he was very passionate about was uh, scleroderma that took his sister Gay's life. And one of the most beautiful things of this was n nobody said hey, everybody go donate to scleroderma in Bob's honor. But do you know what everyone did? They donated they, they to scleroderma. Did it. Bob was dedicated to finding a cure for scleroderma, an autoimmune disease that took his sister's life. The Scleroderma Research Foundation estimates that Bob raised more than $26 million for the SRF in his lifetime. He had three life's works. One was his children, next was comedy, and then the SRF. He spent over 30 years wow. tirelessly working so hard to try to find a cure for scleroderma. So that's why anything that I can do to help keep that legacy going and just help with the SRF because it meant so much to him. As I'm sitting here reflecting and sitting with you is that Bob spent his life and he sort of united people just by being himself. He wasn't trying. And in his passing, he's doing it again. I've never seen anything like this. It's it's unbelievable, the just the outpouring, mm -hmm. but the consensus overall of what an amazing person he was, whether people knew him or didn't know him, because mm -hmm. one way or another, he was in your living room since the 80s, yeah. or you, know, you went to shows, I mean, whatever it is, it was, um, he felt like he was everyone's you know dear friend. Nobody will ever be like Bob. And I think he just kind of lived his life unafraid, which is what struck me. He found love again in his 60s. He told his friends, I love you. He was back on stage. Like the guy was fearless. And I think that's what struck me about it. And she loved all parts of him. But, and even, you know, on stage, he had that, like, that raunchy side. She yeah. was like, but that was part of him. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't afraid. No, he's truthful. Yeah, he you really know? told the truth. It's just like, it just is so moving. I hope it's comforting to her that everyone, so many people just mm -hmm. feel so connected to him and are just missing him and loving him. And what a wonderful legacy to leave. Well, one of the things that's become obvious over the last couple of weeks is Bob Saget was a special guy. Mm -hmm. Kelly? Yeah. Also pretty special. Uh, amazingly special. Yeah. And Bob made friendships late in life. You saw John Mayer just mm -hmm. sobbing after Bob passed. And you just thought, like, wow. He kept, he, his circle kept yeah. getting bigger and bigger.
Well, hello there, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to a Tuesday Pop Start Plus. Today on the show, one of the stars of a miniseries that has a lot of people talking, Inventing Anna's Anna Klumski is here to tell us why she thinks the story about a real-life con woman is so captivating to viewers. Plus, Bob Odenkirk on the ups and downs of his career in an exclusive conversation on his brand new memoir. And a clip from The Vault featuring Oscar winner Javier Bardem. But first, here's today's pop star. Lots to get to in pop star today. Savannah, is it Rami and Michelle's wedding? Or <laughs> Rami. Rami. Well, I might butcher this one too. First up, Fantastic Beast, The Secrets of Dumbledore. Break out your wands, everybody. On Monday, Warner Brothers dropped a new trailer for the third chapter in the Harry Potter prequel series. The new preview teasing fans with a big return to Hogwarts as Jude Law steps back into the role of young Dumbledore and prepares to face off with one of the Wizarding World's most infamous villains. I'm sorry to disturb you, Albus, but I've just received troubling news. Tell me, what is it? It's Grindelwald. The time is closed, my brothers and sisters. Our war with the Muggles begins today! The world as we know it is coming undone. If we're to defeat him, you'll have to trust me. All right, Fantastic Beast, this Beast, The Secrets of Dumbledore, hits theaters April 15th. Oh, thank God that's done. Next up, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock Never Fails to Tug at Our Heartstrings with this thoughtful post on social media and a new video. He's sharing a special moment from a visit to his grandparents' gravesite with his mom in Hawaii. Mommy and Daddy, this is for you. And for all of you out there who's lost someone, this is for you. Oh, that's nice of you, Mom. Go for a walk. Johnson adding in the caption, life moves so fast, mm -hmm. how important it is to just slow down, sit here, reminisce, and listen to her sing, play her ukulele, and tell all her stories. Oh, Some wise words from sweet. The Rock there. Sweet. Next up, Michael Douglas, the Oscar winning is Amy, winner, is aiming to catch lightning in a bottle with his next big role. Douglas set to stars Benjamin Franklin. Franklin in a new oh. show that's headed to Apple TV Plus. The limited series is going to be set in the later years of Franklin's career, around the time he engineered America's alliance with France and peace with England. That'd be between 1778 and 1783, <laughs> if my Thanks memory that. recalls. Well is it Romy well or Romy? Yeah, it's weird Romy, the things you, you remember. <laughs> Douglas will also produce the project based on Stacey Schiff's book, A Great Improvisation, Franklin, France, and the Birth of America. No word yet on when that show's scheduled to premiere, but it does look good already. Mm -hmm. All right, finally, the first First day of the month can only mean what? one thing. That's Jenna Bush Hager is here with a new book. Yes, there I go. am. Hold I'm it. so happy to be a correspondent on Pop Star. Let's do it. Are you all ready? Yes. yes. We have a countdown, I think. Are we counting down on the plaza? I hope so. Three, if not, three, three two, two, one. It is Groundskeeping by Lee Oh, thank God it's that one. It is there a they beautiful, are. beautiful novel about an inspiring writer who takes classes at a local Whoa. college and becomes the groundskeeper. He falls madly in love with a girl named Alma who is very different. It takes place in 2016, oh. but it's about family, unconditional love, and what binds us. Y'all, mm -hmm. in a time where everybody's so divided, yeah. we need this but book. Groundskeeping. Yeah. Okay. You can head to today.com yes. slash read with Jenna or use that QR code for more information. Join the book club. There's not only a book club, it's a whole conversation. Then you can buy the book or mm -hmm. be like me and wait till the movie comes out. <laughs> okay, you can do that. Yeah. But you know what else you can do? You can what? join us tomorrow live on our plaza. We're going to celebrate the third can anniversary. Three, three oh. years. I've turned three oh of my Read gosh. with Jenna. I know also, because oh. there's 35 books I still got to read from the past three years of Read with Jenna. We have Nancy a lot. I don't know how you read yes, yes, and I'm also it may be Nancy's favorite day. It's Read Across America Day. Yeah. So we're going to have a really cool oh, story. Oh, Way to go, Jenna. Way to go. And now the reason we call the show Pop Star Plus, a few more headlines for you, and we'll start with Euphoria. The Zendaya-led series is making its way into HBO history. Sunday's season two finale was the network's second most watched show since 2004. The grungy high school mega hit coming in second only to, that's right, the mega hit Game of Thrones. Of course, you can believe it, it's already been three years since Game of Thrones wrapped up that show's finale and it scored a whopping 19.3 million viewers. A good sign for the upcoming spinoff, House of the Dragon, which is scheduled to premiere later this year. Finally, America's Got Talent Extreme in last night's episode of the AGT spinoff, a 90-year-old grandmother stunned judges when she came out to perform a fiery stunt with her 24-year-old grandson. Lillian held on tight to Hunter 
as the pair rode through, count them, five walls of fire. Well, there's the extreme part of AGT Extreme. No surprise, all three judges gave Lillian and Hunter a big yes. And that's going to do it for your Popstar Plus headlines. But we got a lot more coming up. Anna Klumski is going to give us a glimpse into her new miniseries that a lot of people are talking about. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. You might know Anna Klumski from her Emmy-nominated role on Veep or the beloved 90s movie My Girl. Well, lately she's starring in Inventing Anna, a new miniseries about Anna Delvey, a real-life heiress who stole money from New York elites. Klumski plays a journalist investigating Delvey's story, and she told us what she hopes viewers take away from the show. I think Anna Delvey, I didn't know anything. And uh, and it was really fun when I like told younger people, like my brother or something, that uh, you know I'm gonna do this show about this young woman who who conned a lot of people and then you know my brother's like <gasps> Anna Delby like he was like so excited and yeah so I uh I got to come to it this way I might have a story her name is Anna Delvey or Anna Sorokin no one's sure she's either a rich German heiress or she's flat broke the charges are insane You know, Shonda was interested in a lot more than just adapting a salacious, you know, kind of rich people story, right? Like she was interested in so much more about about how people treat each other, how people deal with each other. Who who's privy to whose information? You know, um, why? What are the sanctions for? Are the sanctions correct? Uh, do they need to be adjusted? Um, you know, how how far can you get into somebody's life without harm being done? You know, think. All of these things. She is everything that is wrong with America right now. I am famous. I mean, I know why our telling of it captivates me, but I, it's, it's honestly still a question I have of what about her actual story has, has lasted this, you know, already. Like, it, it, it's got legs and people still care about it. And I think that's wonderful. Obviously, selfishly, I think it's wonderful. Um, but it is sort of surprising. But yeah, like, we're living the actual phenomenon of her gripping personality. You know, she definitely does remind you of those, of the types of people that, that do kind of just grip on um, on the people that they meet and they just make them want to please them. And so I think that society is doing that <laughs> in a weird way. And I'm part of it. Millions of dollars. Hi, Anna. I just had some questions. I have a question. What's you wearing? You look poor. It's something I really, I, 
connected to with playing Vivian was that she just really, really loves her craft. She loves the craft of journalism the way that I love the craft of acting. I mean, I think on the very surface, she and I both are really, really fast mental processing. You know, like we're, we've just got a ton of information and we're, and it's all, it's all game. So Jessica is um, is one of our co-producers. So she's she's given our blessing all the way um, from the get-go. And I, like we, you know, we, we didn't have like lunches. You know, we didn't do that sort of thing because I I actually was tasked with not matching. I'm not matching her. Some of our our cast members um, had that assignment to you know to be playing a real person that is is known and and um, and to match them. And, and mine, we were fictionalizing. Um, so we're very, very inspired, obviously. We're, the article's the article. But because the article is the thing that we were keeping most closely matched, that is sort of what I went with. I went with all of the written word that I could. I read all of Jessica's articles. I read all of her notes. Um, she's, she, she's a copious note taker, and I and thank you. <laughs> um, you know, especially as we were discussing for, discussing for such a cerebral um, character, it almost feels like the written word you're gonna, you're, you're gonna unlock a lot more through their voice um, uh, on the page, and um, and I just felt like it was that that was my way in. It, it was it was like a I don't know it was like a decoding um, the written word, and I loved that. It helped me with with all my choices. I think Anna Delvey, you know, is up to her, and uh, yeah, I think I think she's I think she's impossible to know. Um, I never met her personally, so I'm not going to really get into who she is, but you know, I, again, another question, how much can you ever know a person, right? Is your, is the way you see green, the way I see green, none of us are going to know like ever. <laughs> so yeah. Um, and you know, it's, it's, it's for her to know and it's for other people to, um, to determine how much it matters to them. I hope that people, it's like the slow burn that I always hope for after a show, you know? I, I really hope that, you know, as they walk around in their own lives, making their own choices, they they have another platform upon which to, to decide, um, you know, what they think is good and bad, what they think is right and wrong, what is okay with them about the way people treat other people. You know, I feel like we present so many great and important and relevant questions about today's, we use the word society so much, but it's true, um, you know, about today's society that I think that, you know, an audience member would be remiss uh, to not adopt some of those questions themselves. You know, so that's, that's I just hope that they, they come, you know, come out of it with, with, with some, some personal debate. It's good, it's good. We should mention you can catch Inventing Anna right now, streaming on Netflix. Next up, a visit with the great Bob Odenkirk. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? 
How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. And we're back on Popstar Plus. Bob Odenkirk is unmistakable for his roles, of course, in Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Now in the new memoir, comedy, 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 drama, he put pen to paper about his own career in showbiz. And he told us all about it today in Studio 1A. and comedian Bob Odenkirk is one of Hollywood's most beloved stars. He's a four-time Emmy nominee for his starring role in Better Call Saul and shined on the beloved Breaking Bad, and now he's sharing his story. It's a new memoir. Comedy, 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 drama. Bob, good morning, good morning. How are hey, you? Hey, I'm good. I'm just, happy you so you're, I'm just happy you're here in this chair. That's so nice of you to say. We were talking I, about how you had, you call it a heart incident. Well, I want to just speak about it properly. Yeah. Heart doctors tell me that what I had was a heart incident, not technically a heart attack, but I don't know what the difference is. <laughs> I was turning blue and not breathing, and my, uh, my heart was arrhythmic and it needed to get back to a rhythm. Where I don't really understand how it works, but I just know that I wouldn't have survived if- Where uh, did it happen and how- I was in the studio shooting Better Call Saul, our final season, yeah. which is gonna premiere on April 18th. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be great if you're a Better Call Saul fan. Yeah. I can't wait for you to see this, but we were shooting a great scene, me and Ray Seahorn and Patrick Fabian and some other people. Yeah. And uh, we had gone off to our waiting area, yeah. and luckily I stayed in the area with the other actors, because if I'd gone to my trailer, I wouldn't be here right oh now. Oh my God. So I went down and they uh, set up the alarm and, and people came out, and uh, Rosa Estrada, our health officer, was a, a medic who served in the armed forces for a tour, and she came out and started CPR on me and saved my life. Did some people have epiphanies after something like that? I'm having a very slow epiphany, yeah. even right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the epiphany was simply that my life is pretty damn great. How great and I should that. appreciate it and the people around oh. me. Um, honestly, that's, you know, I think people do have epiphanies when they have a near-death experience. Um, and oftentimes it's, I have to change something, you know. And I think my epiphany is I have to appreciate what I have because hmm. it's really great and I've got great people around me and um, for some reason people are very <laughs> nice to me well, and, and were so nice on social media when I had this heart, well, heart attack. Well, Bob, um, this book is filled with all of that appreciation, but what you found I love is a lot of what you appreciate your life or maybe the things that didn't happen the way you mm -hmm. wanted them to. Yeah. You were talking about once where you were, you were, you were trying for that Steve Carell job at the office and you yeah. wrote, um, one trick to surviving Hollywood's beat down is to keep making new things in spite of every no. Yeah. To somehow stay in touch with the joy that brought you to the game. It can be hard to do when you're, there's me and Chris Farley backsta yeah. backstage in Second City. That's me and Robert Smigel, yeah. a great writer of sketches. And uh, my oh, my agent, Ari Emanuel, so, now a world beater, no. amazing guy. So how did and, you pick yourself up when there was a when there was a swing and a miss like that? You know, I always had a weird faith in this business that if you came to it with a fresh idea, that you you'd get a, a hearing, a chance. Mm. And it's really true. I mean, showbiz loves new faces and reinvented, you know, characters and faces. So I uh, I think it's just been a great business, and I just believed I, even in the hardest moments, the sense that I had something to offer if I just was patient and set to writing, which is how I started as a writer. Well, as a writer on SNL, you wrote one of the most famous sketches, uh, Living in a Van Down by the River, the Chris Farley sketch. Motivational speaker, yeah. That was that was to die for. It's one of those that lives on yeah, and on and on. Um, just real It's one quick. of my favorite things I ever did in showbiz. Really? My daughter asked me once, What's your favorite thing you've done? And I said it was doing this sketch at Second City every night for us the summer that I was there. And I wrote it for Chris, and he wouldn't quit until he made every performer laugh. You could see him making yeah, I see. Uh, one by one. They're Christine dropping. Applegate and David Spade laugh. He wouldn't yeah. quit. He yeah. would just keep doing the character right to your face. 
until you broke up. Are you happy you made the turn to drama? Um, I didn't even realize it was happening, man. All of a sudden, I'm in this drama stuff, and people are liking it. Um, yeah, it's great. Um, you know, you dig deeper into a character, and I've had such wonderful writing mm -hmm. with uh, the writers of Breaking Bad and now Better Call Saul. I've been very blessed. You are such a nice guy, Bob. Oh, I'm so nice happy. I, I hope people read this book. It's called Comedy, 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 Drama. It's full of not just stories about the business, but also stories about your life. And I think yeah. a lot of people are going to enjoy them. And also, if you're starting out in the business and you're wondering, can I take a crack at this? Yeah. This book is definitely for you. You can find more of it at today.com. Love Bob Odenkirk. Mr. Show, one of my favorite shows to this day. Bob Odenkirk's new memoir is available now. And coming up, we're dedicating our From the Vault segment to Oscar winner, Javier Bardem. Do you think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. Javier Bardem earned another Oscar nomination this year, his fourth, if you're keeping track at home, this time for his portrayal of Ricky Ricardo in Being the Ricardos. Of course, he won the Academy Award for his performance as a psychopath assassin in No Country for Old Men. What a movie that was back in 2008. Well, he spoke to today about that part. Here is today's From the Vault. The Coen brothers have a new thriller out. It is called No Country for Old Men, and it has taken home two Golden Globes. The movie is set in 1980s West Texas. It's the chilling tale of three lives that intersect. When one makes a life-changing discovery worth millions, another hunts him down to get it back, and the third tries to set it all right. Academy Award-nominated actor Javier Bardem stars in No Country for Old Men. Good morning to you. Good morning. You know, like a lot of the characters you run into in this movie, your character runs into, I was blown away. <laughs> Literally, by the movie, by the acting, by everything about it. By the way, congratulations on the Golden Globe, Thank Best you very Supporting much. Actor. I was sorry you didn't get to walk down the red carpet. Was that sort of a bummer? Um, uh, honestly, yeah, no, honestly, no, because you really? you don't have to get dressed and do the carpet. You guys are in the sofa on the coach and having a drink. And so relax. you're sitting in your underwear <laughs> watching it, essentially. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I will be on my underwear, but I <laughs> definitely was watching it on TV. Yeah. Well, so many people <laughs> thought you would get that nod. So were you surprised or just? Uh, I'm, I'm quite surprised about everything. I, I have to say, since the very first moment I did the movie, having in mind that I'm a Spanish actor doing a movie with the Coen Brothers, that's quite a surprise. So. Everything beyond that is kind of a gift for me. I think it's extraordinary the impact that the movie No Country for All Men has had in people, has in people, why and will have in people. Why do you think it's had that impact? I don't know, I think it's about the coins, about their work, about their talent, about how they are able to put together such a big masterpiece of a book by Cormac McCarthy and, and put it out there in a very uh, beautifully constructed way but also easy easy to for everybody but at the same time profound in in the way that uh, there's a big statement behind the movie that makes the movie more powerful is uh, is beyond entertainment is something that is 
it has its own weight. You know, you talk about the effort of the Coen brothers, but you yourself, you had to create this character, Shigur, and you had little to go on. Mm -hmm. In the book, about all you know is that the guy has blue eyes, which mm -hmm. you don't I have, don't have and yet you create this, this very menacing mm -hmm. presence with the gate and the toying costing and obviously the killing. How do you even go about creating Shigur? What, what was the process like for you? Um, I guess it's about really trying to bring what he represents, which is kind of the symbolic idea of violence, into a human behavior, which unfortunately we know, we are aware of that in a lot of behaviors out there. Uh, we, we are part of the violence and we have violence inside. Whatever we like it or not, we have to face it and we have to uh, really control it. Uh, he can't and that's the way you have to more or less understand where he's coming from, what he wants, and try to put it out there and create this character that is just that, a violent machine. But was it hard to inhabit that character? Because just to watch you mm -hmm. is difficult. I don't know, I, I don't think it was especially hard. Uh, it was very hard to wear that haircut, <laughs> but it's not very, really hard to be him just because it's just fiction. It's not something that you take with you when you get back to the hotel. Yeah, tell me about the haircut because a lot of thought went into that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a very good idea of the coins. They did it, they, that's, uh, it came from them, and I think it's very helpful because make the whole character totally insane because it goes so against what he represents, this beautiful mm, Prince Valiant kind of haircut that uh, it's totally, I don't know, uh, opposite what, of what it should be. Now, after you play a role like this, do you want to just do a something light-hearted, mm -hmm. silly? Uh, well, yeah, maybe. I don't. Know. I don't think in that terms. I just think about what the quality of the role is, and if I mean, I mean, I don't want to kill anybody else in the next <laughs> I'm glad couple to hear of that. years <laughs> in movies. I mean, so, no, I sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank Congratulations. You. Good luck with the Oscar nomination. Something tells me we'll be hearing your name a lot more <laughs> in the weeks and months ahead. Thank you. And guess what? It just so happens to be Javier Bardem's birthday today. So, Javier, happy birthday to you out there. Another pop star plus in the books. Tomorrow we've got one of the stars of the Gilded Age. Until then, bye-bye. Welcome to Today All Day. All day? Today all day. All day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking yeah. who's your favorite okay. character you've ever played. Oh, the right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> What is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. My buddy Cal cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart today with simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Wow. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look, look so good. No, it doesn't look good. <laughs> will you okay. judge us in a cook-off? I yeah. will. And okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day.
everybody watching today all day. Hope you're enjoying this first day of March. Big thanks for tuning into our digital show today in we, 30. We do have a lot going on around the world and right here in Studio 1A, so we'll get right to it. We're going to begin with the crisis in Ukraine. Richard Engel and Tom Yamas on the ground there with a first-hand look at the escalating fighting overnight and its toll on the people of Ukraine. Plus, what will the president's message be during tonight's State of the Union address? Peter Alexander will have a preview. And then two women will share an unbelievable story, really. After learning at the age of 55, they had been switched at birth. We'll go inside their search for answers and the silver lining that's come from that discovery. And all you cool cats and kittens better stick around. Kate McKinnon and Kyle McLaughlin joined us and the stars of Peacock's new show, Joe versus Carol. They brought in some laughs. Is it cool, cool cats and kittens? You like that's that? Carol, Carol, Carol Baskin. Baskin. Carol Baskin. You got that's it. That's a big line. Okay, right. but anyway, are you ready? It's time for Today, Today in 30. 30. Our correspondents are spread out around the world to bring you the very latest. We're going to start with NBC's Richard Engel in Ukraine's capital city. Hey, Richard, good morning. Good morning. Ukrainian officials are now accusing Russia of deliberating, tar deliberately targeting civilians and using banned weapons. Ukraine's ambassador to Washington said that Russia used a so-called vacuum bomb, also known as a thermobaric weapon. It is a bomb that sucks in oxygen to create a powerful high-temperature explosive, reportedly killing at least 70 soldiers. If used in a civilian setting, it could constitute a war crime. Here in Kiev, people are bracing. They are worried about that massive convoy heading this way. Kiev this morning is staring down the barrel of a Russian assault column that's reportedly up to 40 miles long. Satellite images confirm it's big, deadly, and dangerous, with hundreds of armored vehicles, tanks, and towed artillery, and that it's heading toward the capital of three million people. Russia seems to be changing tactics. So far, Russia has been using small group attacks with incursions into towns and cities, which the Ukrainian military has been able to repel with brave and determined resistance. What's coming looks more like old, blunt Russian siege warfare. It's already happening outside of Kiev, with Russian forces attacking Mariupol in the south, home to a half million people, with tragic consequences and disturbing images emerging. A six-year-old girl next to her parents at a supermarket was hit by a shell. She was rushed to an ambulance, alive but just clinging. At the hospital, her injuries proved too much. Show this to Putin, a doctor told a camera from the Associated Press. The eyes of this child and crying doctors. In Kharkiv, Ukraine's second city, more siege and assault. Russia pounding the city center and its administrative building in ways that appear indiscriminate, including Ukrainian officials and a human rights group allege with banned cluster munitions. Russia denies the accusation. President Volodymyr Zelensky overnight saying the Russians targeted residential sections of the city, calling it a military crime. But Ukrainians are not being cowed. Russian troops did capture the small port city of Berdyank. But residents came out and shouted down the armed Russians. Berdyank is Ukraine, they yelled. The Russian troops seemed surprised and held their fire. In Kiev, those staying behind are readying themselves for street fighting, with sandbag checkpoints manned by armed volunteers and with seemingly endless supplies of Molotov cocktails. They have no chance to get into our city and into our country. So that's why they should leave, or they will, will, will be all dead. That's the simple reason. Us or them. As Ukraine braces for a new, possibly even more brutal chapter of this unprovoked war. Here in Kiev, the air raid sirens have just begun to wail again. The UN says it so far has documented 136 Ukrainians killed, including 12 children. But the real death toll is believed to be much higher. Horrifying. All right, Richard Engel for us there. Richard, thank you. And now to the intensifying refugee crisis sparked by this invasion. UN officials say more than 500,000 Ukrainians have already fled the country in just recent days, and it is a number that is rising by the hour. NBC's senior national correspondent Tom Yamas is in western Ukraine for us. He's got that part of the story. Hi, Tom. Good morning to you. 
Hey, Savannah, good morning to you. You know, we've been telling you about the civilian effort to take on the Russians when it comes to the military, but there's also a civilian effort to help out each other. This assembly line of humanity is sending those bags, which are filled with winter clothes, food, water, onto trucks, and it's going to Ukrainians in war-torn regions all over this country. And it's not just the assembly line. This entire building is filled with volunteers. It's running 24 hours a day, all to help their fellow countrymen. Here in western Ukraine, where a humanitarian crisis is unfolding, the city of Lviv increasingly on edge. Volunteers manning checkpoints to keep out Russian saboteurs. We're looking for enemy documents, maps, GPS. And you feel you, you have to do this, right? You have to protect yeah, your town? Yeah, absolutely. My child's here, my wife here, and I must be here and protect my family and my city. These checkpoints have been running 24 hours a day since the war started. For many of the smaller towns, these are the frontline defense. They have things like these tire spikes to stop cars. And for bigger vehicles, like say a Russian tank, they have what they call hedgehogs. They hope these can at least slow down those larger military vehicles. And if Russian forces arrive, ordinary citizens ready to fight back. Men like Igor have been working around the clock, making thousands of Molotov cocktails. All Ukrainians from kids of six years old to the old uh, persons uh, from uh, 60, 70 years old uh, are in the condition of war. Meanwhile, the mass exodus continues. Border crossings and train stations packed with mothers and young children families trying to get to safety while coping with the heartbreak of separation. This man putting his pregnant wife on the train for Poland, while Yevhenia, traveling with her young daughter, is leaving behind her husband. So hard and so scary about, um, about my husband. I don't want to say goodbye. Do you think the Russians are going to come here? Yes. Despite the odds, many in Lviv say they refuse to give up hope bringing food and clothing for those who've lost their homes and come here to seek shelter and safety. We are sending the message that we are not alone and we can help each other and we are together. There is no doubt that Ukraine is united right now at this moment. I want to show you even children are helping out in this effort. It's Ukrainians of all ages, here they're giving out uh, supplies people need either in their kitchens or in their bathrooms. And guys, this got me. We've been telling you about those mothers traveling with babies. This is an entire wall of donated diapers and pampers because, you know, those mothers have been traveling for days, for hours. They're waiting in lines at those train stations, at those border crossings, and so many of them need these essential supplies. Guys, back to you. Well, this crisis in Ukraine is just one of many challenges that the president will have to focus on when he delivers his first State of the Union address later tonight. NBC's chief White House correspondent Peter Alexander joins us with a look ahead. Peter, good morning. Savannah, good morning. The president was initially eyeing this speech as a reset of sorts, an opportunity really to focus on his domestic priorities, but the Russian invasion obviously has forced him to dramatically revise this speech. It will not be a wholesale overhaul of his planned address, we're told, but the president will emphasize his long-running theme of defending democracies against autocracy. The State of the Union address is the biggest stage for any president, but tonight President Biden faces unique challenges both at home and abroad. Juggling the war in Ukraine with the worries of Americans. And while the COVID situation is improving nationwide, Americans are struggling with record inflation and soaring gas prices. Still, senior advisors say the president will present an optimistic view of the country's future. President Biden recently detailing what he hopes his legacy so will be. Things. I hope my legacy is that I was able to restore some decency and honor to the office. I was able to bring the middle class back to a place where they had real opportunity, given an even chance to succeed. And I was able to reconstruct our alliances, which had been frayed so badly internationally. But Americans have been largely unimpressed with low approval ratings in his first year in office. A new poll showing only a third of Americans are satisfied with the president's handling of the Ukraine crisis. On Monday, President Biden trying to downplay the risk of a nuclear standoff after Vladimir Putin put his nuclear deterrence forces on high alert. Mr. President, should Americans be worried about nuclear war? No. 
While the U.S. is leading a coalition of allies, ratcheting up stiff sanctions against Russia and delivering hundreds of millions of dollars in military and humanitarian aid to Ukraine, the White House has ruled out imposing a no-fly zone over parts of Ukraine, despite President Zelensky's urging the U.S. and NATO to do so. Is there any way in which the U.S. would support a no-fly zone over Ukraine? It would essentially mean the U.S. military would be shooting down planes, Russian planes. That is definitely escalatory. That is not something the president wants to do. Lawmakers speaking out overnight after a classified briefing on the crisis. It clearly appears to be a war to terrorize the population, and I, and I think in many ways the worst is yet to come in that regard. Their clear focus at this point, if you just watch how they've positioned the troops, he's progressing towards laying siege, like a, like a medieval siege of Kiev, at which point you're going to have a bunch of millions of starving people. Peter, given all of this, the Ukraine crisis, how much room does the president have tonight to focus on domestic issues? Will it be a one-topic speech or will it be the usual laundry list we see in these State of the Union addresses? Well, it's definitely going to be a high-stakes balancing act for this president tonight. Some officials here have told me that they hope America's collective COVID haze is lifting with serious illness and cases dropping dramatically. And while most Americans think the worst of the pandemic is behind them, new polling shows they're not giving President Biden credit for that improving situation. Aides, to your point, do say he'll also need to talk about uh, he'll also talk about the need to demonstrate American leadership before the world when democracy is under threat, they say, overseas and here at home. And he will focus on his agenda, like bringing down the price of prescription drugs and beyond and other aspects of what was the Build Back Better plan formally, even if it's no longer packaged together under one umbrella. Savannah. All right, Peter, thank you very much. Savannah, you're heading to Washington for the State of the Union. Yes, NBC News will have live coverage of the president's address right here. Here, starting at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, we'll have the overnight reaction tomorrow on Today from Washington and a live interview with Vice President Kamala Harris. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. NBC News, streaming free now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. All right. Yeah, it is. We've got a, we actually have a double dose of a boost. So here we go. Uh, both of these, by the way, guys, are involving grandparents. And you might think by their age it would be hard to surprise a grandma or a grandpa, but watch this woman's reaction when her best friend sneaks in behind her. It happens to be her 90th birthday. Is this seat taken? <laughs> Is this seat taken? No! <laughs> oh, they need time to catch up. Those two women haven't seen each other in a bit. What a beautiful, beautiful moment. Okay, I didn't think one was enough. How about another one? So there was a grandfather. He was not expecting the new sneakers he got for his birthday, especially the kind that light up. Check it out. <laughs> Grandpa's been wanting that pair of light up sneakers for years. He thought they only came in oh kid size. All right, we've got no. our first nominee for the Boost Hall there of Fame. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. When we come back here on a Tuesday morning, imagine finding out you aren't even related to the parents who reared you. For two women, a DNA test turned their whole worlds upside down, challenging 
everything they thought they knew about their families. Well, Kate Snow has this fascinating story and the sweet silver lining to come out of all of it right after this. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Ali Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. NBC News. Streaming free. Now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We are back. We've got a stunning switched at birth story, and it took more than a half century mm. to unravel. NBC's senior national correspondent Kate Snow is here with a discovery that's rocked two families in Oklahoma. And this is a wild story. Yeah, it is a really strange story, guys. Good morning. Jill Lopez and Tina Ennis were born on the same day in 1964. They grew up about two hours away from one another, total strangers until two years ago when they were both 55, they and their families discovered they had been switched when they were babies in the hospital. I just loved her instantly. It was 1964 in Duncan, Oklahoma, and Catherine Jones had just given birth to her second child. And I thought she was the most beautiful little baby and had such a beautiful complexion. As a kid, Tina loved to make people laugh. How would you describe Tina growing up? Oh, she was just always a, a blessing. Always happy-go-lucky. Tina calls her childhood just normal. My mom's grandparents were terrific. We had horses with them. And he took us to rodeos and play days. And Sounds really nice. Sounds very Oklahoma. Yeah, it was very Oklahoma. Life was pretty normal until 2019, when Tina, then 55 years old, took an Ancestry.com DNA test and was sent a list of people she was genetically related to. And did you recognize any of those names? The only name I recognized was my daughter's. Tina was confused and asked her mother, Catherine, to take the test. Ours didn't match up. There was no overlap? Nothing. Tina's daughter started searching the internet for the surnames that did come up and found 55-year-old Jill Lopez, born on the same day in 1964. Tina, what did you think when you saw Jill's photo? I thought it was my, I thought it looked just like my mother. Tina reached out to Jill and she also took a DNA test. With those results came a life-changing, destabilizing new reality. Jill was Catherine's biological daughter. Tina was the biological daughter of Jill's parents, who are now deceased. Somehow the girls were switched at birth. It's a hard, it's a hard thing to, to get around. Yeah. All I could think about was how I was going to tell my mom. I just thought she's not going to be able to handle it. Tina gathered the siblings she was raised with to tell Catherine. It just devastated me, totally devastated me. It felt like somebody took a hatchet or something and hatched out a big part of my heart. She was afraid she was going to lose me, and she wasn't going to. I wasn't going to leave her. 
Their new reality has brought a confusing swirl of emotions that they're still processing. Pain, grief, regret, anger. It's a hard thing to know what to do, you know? You don't know how to move yeah. forward when your whole world is turned upside down. Yeah, because to me, there's so many people involved. I mean, it's not just me and Jill. It's two entire families. Jill held a gathering to introduce Tina to some of her biological family. A bunch of people are there that you don't know, but they're all related to you. That must be strange. It was very strange. Catherine is sorry she missed so much of Jill's life. They're spending time together. They both love purple, shopping, and estate sales. Jill said you've become friends. That's correct. Not Maybe not mother-daughter, but friends. Yes, and it's a very good start. But Tina will always be Catherine's little girl. I just, I could not lose Tina. She, you know, she'll just always be my daughter. I've loved her from the second they laid her in my arms. All three women want to hold the hospital responsible, represented by the Smith Barquette Law Firm. They have filed suit against the current regional hospital, who they argue merged long ago with the hospital where Tina and Jill were born. But that regional hospital says it was formed in the 1970s and is not the legal successor to the hospital that switched Tina and Jill at birth. That legal battle is still playing out. Guys, no one really knows exactly how yeah. these two babies were switched at birth, mm -hmm. both the delivery doctors and all the nurses involved are all deceased now mm -hmm. so wow. it's hard they may never know how it happened God. nowadays there's you know the wristband you beep you can't even say hello to your child without yeah. all these yeah. but yeah. back in the 60s yeah it was well, a little different, yeah, a lot then. different. Yeah. Well, it yeah. makes it tough to biology is not always the determining factor in what you consider to be family yeah, yeah. we sure. talked about that that yeah. they all feel so strongly bonded to right. the people who raised, raised them, them. Yeah. Yeah. Who which them. shows you that that a mother's love is a mother's love right wow. thank, thank you for that it's a great story Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. Do you think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. All right, when Tiger <laughs> King came out in 2020, the story of the big cat breeding underworld was so wild, you had to wonder if it was real. You know what? It was real. And now there's a new Peacock series about Joe Exotic and Carol Baskin's feud. It's called Joe versus Carol. It stars SNL's Kate McKinnon as Carol and Kyle MacLachlan, who plays her second husband, Howard. Yeah. <laughs> we have a sneak peek. <laughs> well, I have to get on the road to Miami. Oh. And I'll be back Thursday. What company are you fixing this time? Oh, uh, Windows and Doors manufacturer. Oh. Yeah, their financials are a mess. It's going to take me months to unravel and put a new plan in place. I am so excited. <laughs> Well, you're a genius and you can wear the hell out of a suit. That's right. They needed the big guns. <laughs> Ow, my heart. <laughs> Oh, wow. wow. So your love, love story. Oh, wow. It, it was love real story. chemistry. That's some chemistry. It yeah. is a love story. Uh -huh. That's you know, what we, focus, we right? liked each yeah. other. Yeah. Have you all worked together? Have you all no. worked together no. before? But we, no. We, but we connected and got along, and it was wonderful. Does she yeah. make you laugh the way she Come did on. earlier when she kept putting her she shoe in Hoda's face? Yes, there was some of that. 
I'm oh, sorry. At least there was nothing on the bottom of the shoe. <laughs> there you go. That's very thoughtful. <laughs> very thoughtful. I know, but did she crack you up on the set at all? A is lot. She really? A lot. But there was a lot of improv, too, which oh, I really, really, really appreciated. Like yeah, I tend to be kind of on the script guy, and she was absolutely... You just did your thing? ...kind of doing her own thing. I mean, some script, but then also just some flights of fancy that I think were fantastic. <laughs> and he was just marvelous, and he really went with it and was a wonderful sport and, uh, did, and did wonderful improv as well. I tried my best. <laughs> well, we Ladies. should say that you were into Carol Baskin before yes, the big Netflix. Even... You were pre all of the craze. You were into it podcast? on that podcast. Yes, there was on. a Wondery podcast mm -hmm. uh, called Joe Exotic about the feud, and um, and I loved. So I loved these characters mm -hmm. before anyone knew who they were. Yeah, yeah, and now you know. <laughs> and, that, and now look at this. And here we are. And, okay, and the husband, the second husband, yeah. we, mm. from, from watching the Netflix show, you know that there's this love. Mm -hmm. What was, did you, when you watched this, or did you watch it during, during the pandemic yes. and think, I want to be yeah. this man? I don't know if I thought that. <laughs> um, but I did, what really appealed to me was their relationship and the love uh -huh. that was between them, the mm -hmm. obvious love that was between them, almost infatuation. And I thought, oh, this could be interesting to yeah, explore. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and so we had fun with that. And you know, they're, they're both kind of dorks, and, and so frankly, are we, and I'm sorry to use no, no, that. No, 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 no. You that, just watch me do strange things with my <laughs> yeah, hands yeah. and guns. I mean, that's kind of, is that what you would do in real life? life? You would go like I'm, that? I'm a nerd, yeah. You're a nerd. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Kate, for real. You don't even, you give don't me a, know the yeah, half. Yeah, give me a example. little example of nerdism. Example. Um, <clears throat> I had, well, I mean, I had an iguana growing up, and uh, I had Madagascar hissing cockroaches at one point. <laughs> Wait, what? I this is fascinating. I know. Well, this is, this Keep is going. a whole, this is gonna going to take us down a dark road. But yeah, I'm a big, big nerd. Yeah. Well, now you're a cat person. You've always been a cat yes, person, right? Yes. What's your cat's name? My cat is named Nino. Nino. <laughs> Are you saying anyone? Oh, Nino. Oh. Oh. <laughs> What's Wait. Nino like? Well, Nino has a very interesting a snarl. Sn like a snaggle tooth. He's missing a top tooth, and ah. so sometimes it, it just gets caught. And it's I look at him every time. What? I laugh every what time I look at him? him. What is it? He's very charismatic, and he is uh, very big, and he is oh. substantial, and he sleeps. Oh. Like that? Like in a my scarf. body. And, uh -huh. you know, we're, he's my best friend. Yeah. I, I know how you feel. I have a best friend named Bernadette, <laughs> really, who is a cat. But don't, really? don't look at me like that. I'm just saying that Bernadette has lived with you for many years. But go on. She moved to Texas because she's happier there. Okay, oh. it's hard to be. Oh. Don't look at me like that. So you lost your. You best lost friend. your baby and your best friend. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I know it was really hard, but I feel like she's living a better life. What about what? Uh, <laughs> Nino was a star. Okay, I, just let's go back to Nino. Nino actually was in a very funny Whiskers. Yeah. Are we? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Whiskers. Are we? Let's watch it. People have been adopting cats at a record rate, meaning the only ones left are real bottom of the barrel nobodies. Let's meet today's feline up. This is Rex. Rex is a simple alley cat because all he wants is belly rubs. You're so, wait, what are you what? doing? <laughs> well, I had to, it's a sketch I've done before and there's there's like seven kittens in a thing. And then, uh, so they wanted, I wanted to do it, but I only had one cat at my disposal because this was when we were all quarantined. Yeah. Um, so he became all of the cats and I had little mustaches and crops to differentiate. And uh, gosh, he did a one man show. Kyle, I, 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 Kyle, we, I, did, we didn't miss you on the runway. No, we didn't. Oh, Sorry. Okay. No, no, we just, okay. no. Can we just show he, this? This is, no, by the way, this is Prada, Prada in oh Milan. God. This is right. Prada. Uh, Stop it. I mean, what are you doing? There you go. Wait, what are you? Who so are you? Gravitas. <laughs> Look at that turn. You Come own on. it. That's no, you're owning it. You're who owning it. Wow. Okay. Very, so how did you get that? Sweet. How'd you get that walk down? That's uh, not easy. I just basically it, the thought is don't fall <laughs> down. Uh -huh. I have rubber boots on carpet. You know how tough that is. Oh, uh, look at there that. You can see. Oh, I like that. Are those jeans? You got No, it's like a silk pajama. Silk pajama. You know, so this is like going out to get cat food late at night <laughs> with the overcoat on. <laughs> All right, you can start streaming Joe versus Carol this Thursday on the NBC streaming network, Peacock. We've got a really special show for you tomorrow and today. We're going to mark three years of Read with Jenna. Remember when it was just a baby? Oh, my oh, gosh. Three years old. We're celebrating in our plaza in a big way. We're going to see you tomorrow, so have a great Tuesday, guys.
Do you want to see what it looks like? Okay. Here's the big reveal. That is huge. Huge, right? Oh, that's yeah. way bigger than the baby. Huh? <laughs> Welcome to Dylan Dishes Cooking with Cal. In this Today All Day series, I'm looking back at some of my favorite Cooking with Cal recipes and sharing my top kitchen tips. Today, it's all about the Bake Ahead Brunch. As a busy parent, I love anything that I can make ahead of time, and breakfast is no exception. First up, it's my classic cinnamon buns. Calvin loves these cinnamon buns because, well, who doesn't love cinnamon buns? I, I think he realizes that it's a special treat that we don't get every morning. I mean, it's something besides cereal or, or oatmeal or something healthy. These are kind of a dessert for breakfast and they're totally worth it. For this recipe, you'll need warm milk, yeast, sugar, eggs, melted butter, flour, cinnamon, and salt. And for the best part, the homemade icing, you'll need cream cheese, butter, powdered sugar, and vanilla. You've never made this recipe before, but I'm positive when you test it, you are going to love it. Okay, first things first, we have to warm up the milk because the milk just came out of the fridge and it's really cold. Now, can you pour this into here? Let me move it a little closer. Sorry, I can't reach that far. Right, we'll pour it in there. So instead of using regular yeast, we're gonna use instant yeast. So we don't have to wait like, oh, nine months for it to rise, okay? Careful, this is the melted butter. Ha ah. Okay, sprinkle in the sugar. A little salt. All right, so now we need an egg and a yolk from an egg. Okay. That's a pop. So now, pop this off. Okay, I'm gonna sprinkle in some flour, okay? It's getting harder and harder? Yeah, what's that for? This is, remember how you just said the dough is getting hard to, to work with? Mm -hmm. We're gonna let this dough hook do all the work. So when we leave this here for an hour, the dough is gonna rise and fill up the whole bowl. It's gonna grow. And with this top, do we do with that? It just helps keep the dough nice and warm. I'll see you back here in an hour. Do you want to see what it looks like? Okay. Here's the big reveal. That is huge. Huge, right? Oh, that's way bigger than the baby. Huh? <laughs> what do you think, Ollie? Are we doing a good job? What is that? Oh, that's really good. Whoa, it's nice and warm, right? Good job. Oh, it's nice and tight. So awesome. I see you, Ollie. Don't they look so pretty? Mm -hmm. I'm expecting these will be delicious. Let's wait 45 minutes and then we'll put them in the oven. Pull this off, big reveal. Oh, baby, these look delicious. Okay, let's make the frosting. Mm, I'm actually so yummy. Actually so yummy. Should we check out this bun in the oven? Yeah. Baby, spread this all over. Can we share it? Why? Because it's huge. Mmm. Ah, oh. that is good. Before we get to the next recipe, let's answer a viewer question from Instagram. How did you teach Cal how to crack eggs? <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, I would say a lot of patience. Okay. 
that first egg that your child cracks is going to squish in his hands or her hands and get all over the place. So I, I recommend always cracking one egg into a little bowl off to the side. Don't do it right over the main mixture because you're going to need to pick out a lot of those shells. Teach them to just make a little crack and then they'll stick their fingers in the hole. Do it your thumbs and then pull it apart. Okay. Just get to that point. You're still gonna have a lot of shells, but eventually they'll be able to stick their finger in the hole and peel it open like that. And eventually they sort of just understand how the whole shell thing works. But patience, you're gonna need a lot of patience and a lot of extra bowls. Good crap. Nice, buddy, you are getting so good at this. Okay, let's answer another question from Instagram. How old was Cal when you started cooking with him? I think Calvin was almost two because I remember the f one of the first things I started cooking with him uh, were holiday cookies. So his birthday is in the middle of December. So it was leading up to Christmas time. And I just, I put this awesome stool right next to me that got him, you know, almost as tall as I was. And he just watched me bake these and I let him do whatever I thought he can do. And I just, I let him make a mess. That's what kids are going to do at first. They're going to make such a mess. Flour is gonna get everywhere. Eggshells are gonna get everywhere. But I mean, you can clean up a mess and it's fun. And the more they do it, the better they get and the cleaner they'll be. And when they're nice and young, they like to help clean up too. So that's always good to put them to work. When we come back, Bake Ahead Brunch continues with my blueberry buckle. It's my fancy way of adding a fruity twist to a classic crumb cake. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We're back with more Dylan Dishes Cooking with Cal, and today is all about the simple ways Calvin and I take brunch to the next level. Next up, it's another of my favorite breakfast treats. We call it blueberry buckle. I, to be honest, have no idea what a blueberry buckle is. It came from my husband's family, and he always said his grandmother made the best blueberry buckle. When I saw it, I'm like, oh, it's just like a, a coffee cake with blueberries. I can make that. And I didn't know what else to call it, so I just 
kept calling it blueberry buckle. Must be a New England thing. For the cake, you'll need flour, cornstarch, salt, ginger powder, baking powder, egg, vanilla, sugar, blueberries, of course. And for the crumble topping, you'll need cinnamon, salt, brown sugar, and butter. Are you ready to help? <laughs> I normally make this recipe with cake flour. It's a little bit lighter and it makes it a little more fluffier. You can't always find cake flour or sometimes you just don't have it. So I'm going to show you a trick using all-purpose flour and cornstarch. The trick is to make cake flour out of all-purpose flour. You take a cup of flour, remove two tablespoons of that flour, and then add in two tablespoons of cornstarch. So we just made cake flour. Cool, huh? We need one teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt, okay, and we need a half a teaspoon of ginger. Okay, while you do that, I'm going to put the butter in here. I'm ready. Okay, ready? Count with me. We need three of these. Pour this egg in there. Oh, good. Awesome. I'm gonna oh, I love the smell of vanilla. Yum. So good. Oh, thanks, baby. Hit this one over here. Just to like the four. Looks like a lot of blueberries, but they are just gonna cook down, make the whole cake purple. It's gonna be so juicy. So now the best part, the topping. Wanna help? Okay, so we need a teaspoon of cinnamon, some salt. It's gonna take a very long time. Half a cup of brown sugar. Yummy. Packed brown sugar. Yeah. Oh, what's that? Is that the topping? Mm-hmm. Is that the best part? <laughs> I think it might be. Mm -hmm. Yummy. Stand back. Let's get to some of the questions you had for me on Instagram when I posted this recipe. Amanda asked, can this be made with frozen blueberries? And to be honest, I've actually never made it with frozen blueberries. I, I tend not to like frozen blueberries all that much. I feel like they don't have as much flavor. They tend to be kind of watery and, and small. Um, so I think this is really something I eat seasonally. I don't really cook it throughout the year. And it's really just that, that height of blueberry season when you get those big juicy blueberries. I just, I just find it tastes so yummy. And Pammy asked, can you use other fruit? I'm sure you can. Um, 
<laughs> I'm not a big experimenter. Once I try something for the first time, I kind of just stick with it and I know this is my blueberry buckle recipe or this is my apple crisp recipe. And I never try to work in other fruit, but I bet it would taste delicious with strawberries. Um, I bet peaches would, would kind of taste really good in there. Um, so you'll have to try it for me and let me know what you think. For these recipes and more cooking with Cal, go to today.com slash Dylan Dishes. Three. Let's see how fast I could cut these. No, that's terrible. <laughs> I'm Bella James and this is Kids in the Kitchen. My name is Isabella and I'm in second grade and I'm seven years old. When I first started to cook, I was four years old and the first thing I ever made was scrambled eggs. My mom taught me how to cook. Some of my favorite making dishes are that I make with my mom are cow foot, breadstew chicken, curry goat, curry chicken. Cow foot is a is a Jamaican dish that, that my mom makes that I absolutely love. I think Grammy Pearl used to make cow foot. My great great grandma had a restaurant in Jamaica. Everyone in my family loves to cook, so that's why I like to cook for everyone in my family. I have my own lemonade business, and it's called Sunshine Lemonade. Some of the things I like to do are to play Roblox with my friends, playing outside in the treehouse with my sister. Well, anything to get out to have fun, really. I'm also a Girl Scout and I love to ride my bike. Today, I'm so excited because today we will be making my upside down pineapple cake and my sunshine lemonade. What I love most about it is it's not too sugary. And we also put applesauce and stuff, eggs, for people who are vegan. This is what you need to get started. Some cooking spray, some coconut oil, brown sugar, pineapple slices, and maraschino cherries. I think maraschino cherries is a funny name. I think it might be French. <laughs> You're going to need a nine inch pan, some parchment paper, then you're going to put it at the bottom of the pan. Now you wanna spray the sides with some cooking spray. Now, what you are going to want to do is you're gonna get your coconut oil, pour it at the bottom, but make sure it is melted coconut oil. So, the cake come out nice and moist. Now we are going to get our brown sugar, pinch and sprinkle the coconut oil and the sugar. It's gonna make a nice caramel taste when it's done. Yep, you have to use the whole thing. We want something really sweet today. We want something really sweet today. No more vegetables. No more vegetables. Today we deserve a treat. Now you are going to want to grab the pineapple, put it in the center. And I'm going to make a flower design. And then, now I'm gonna put another pineapple right there. Pineapple right there. Whew. Okay. And then, I'm going to put it right there. And it's cherry time. Mm -hmm. Okay, one cherry, two cherry, three cherry, four cherry, five cherry, six cherry, seven cherries more. <laughs> the reason why we put the pineapples and cherries on the bottom is because the bottom is the top. So when you flip it, it looks like a cake. And now we are going to make the cake batter. That right there. Cake batter time. Now we are going to preheat the oven to 350 degrees. 
Now I've set up all my cake batter ingredients. Now we are going to start with all our dry ingredients and then mix them together. First, we are going to start with our baking powder. You have to make sure all that gets in there. Hey, you're hiding from my yarn, sir. Now, the salt. Hmm, maybe I'll take some. That's better. Now, my favorite part, be sure to take coconut. It's time for our sugar. Let's mix it well so it can combine. Now we're gonna mix up our wet ingredients. Okay, first we are going to start with some coconut oil. This might look very weird, but I promise you it's gonna look better when it's um cooked. Let's open the vanilla. Okay, got it. Make sure it's one tablespoon. This should be good. Okay. Oh no, cut, cut. Okay, we'll put some more back in there. Okay, vanilla goes in there. It's not that bad, but it's just gonna be a little bit of vanilla. It's okay, it's okay. Who doesn't like some vanilla? Okay. Now it's time for the pineapple juice. Oh my goodness, this is very chunky coconut milk. Last but not least, our apple cider vinegar. Now, mix well to, to combine. The coconut oil and the applesauce are gonna make the cake nice and moist. Now it's time to mix the wet ingredients with the dry ingredients. Let's scrap our handy dandy whiskity whiskity. Oh my, this is very thick. Oh my. Now it's time to put the cake batter in the cake pan. This is kind of having a sad part, but now we have to put it in the oven and it takes a whole entire hour. So I think I'm gonna have to call mom. Mom, can you help me? So the cake is in the oven and it's gonna take an hour. So in the meanwhile, how about we work on my spicy Jamaican lemonade? This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is gonna be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at eight on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. You think it's been healthy for the Democratic Party to highlight the division in the party? What does an exit ramp for Putin look like that allows him to save face? How much of this is on the CDC and how much of this is on Washington? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, 
Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. This cake goes great with my spicy Jamaican sunshine lemonade. Let me go grab the ingredients and let me show you how to make it. I need eight lemons. One, two, three. Oops. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, this is just getting ridiculous. <laughs> so what you're going to need is lemons, fresh turmeric, fresh ginger root, some brown sugar, and molasses, and water too. So let's start peeling. I like to use a spoon to peel the turmeric and ginger sometimes. It's really easy. More mess, more mess, I demand more mess. Turmeric can stain your hands, so sometimes you might want to use gloves so you don't get a stain. Now, let's start peeling some ginger. You could also use ground turmeric and ginger. I like using fresh spices because it gives a better flavor. Now I have to slice these, but it's a little hard for me. So, Mom! Here's the next piece. When you're done. Okay, thanks. Uh, now I'm gonna add some water to the ginger and the turmeric and put it to a boil. Now let's start cutting up these lemons. You want to be really careful to make sure you don't cut where your fingers are because we're not cutting off fingers today, okay? Okay, well we're gonna get the lemon squeezer. Starting, yo! I love this machine because it has little holes in it, so the seeds won't go through me. And Bella squeezes lemon, she don't play. So the ginger and turmeric looks so good, it smells amazing in here. But now it's time to remove it from the stove. Okay, now I'm gonna add sugar, the molasses, and the lemon juice. But I wanna do it while it's hot, so then it can all dissolve and come together. So first, let's start with some sugar. I don't want to splash it. How about we use a spoon? That'll make life more easy right now. That's, do you see how satisfying that is? Now it's time for the molasses. It's so sticky. One time I tried it, it tastes a lot like honey, so I kind of liked it. Time for the lemon juice. We're going to let it cool for a bit. Okay. Put that right on top of there. This is my most favorite lemonade ever. It looks delicious. Right there. Oh my God. Ooh. This right here could make us some money, 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 money. You know what goes great with lemonade? My cake. I think it's finally ready. Let's flip it. Now you have to let it sit for 15 minutes. It's gonna be the longest 15 minutes of my life. Oh my goodness, that's exactly what we want. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Oh, wow. It looks so good. This, I will eat in one bite. Now that my cake and my lemonade are ready, I'm so excited to share this with my favorite person, my mom. Thank you. It looks, I know, it looks so good. Okay. 
Mmm, it's super moist. Mmm. Let it go. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I loved you guys being in my kitchen with me today. Hopefully you can make this recipe too. See you later, bye! Good morning, breaking overnight under siege. New Russian rocket attacks across Ukraine and on the ground troops pushing even closer to Kiev. The invasion stretching into its 